the peak. Now I have a message for all you good, moral, Christian people who are complaining that breasts and vaginas are obscene. Hey, don't complain to me. Complain to the manufacturer. Okay? And although Jesus told us not to judge, I know you're going to judge anyway, so judge sanely. Judge with your eyes open. What do you consider obscene? Is this obscene to you? Last time on the Don and Mike Show. My wife buys a croquet set. I don't, I don't even understand croquet. It's a I'm simple on, game. I mean, you're, you're basically taking a hammer to your balls. <laughs> Which is why you would think my wife would be, like, world-class at it. <laughs> She's got so much experience with that. Well... Are you? I'm stuck on my roof. My ladder fell down. Are you really up on your roof? The only way I can I, figure I guess out. I could jump down, but. That's the only way I guess we could figure out is because you would jump. Hold on, let me get up some nerve. All right, well then jump off your roof. Right, here we go, ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. You're all right. Well, good look at that. And not only did you win the contest, but you got off the roof. Two and with one stone, I guess. The first course we're taking is dissecting cadavers. They say that like the preserving fluid stays with you. My question is, if I develop a romantic interest up there, she asks me, you know, what's that smell? You sadly are going to be one of those guys who just has to make love to dead people. Huh? You'll be able to hump all the stiffs. No, but they're not. Wait till you get a good looking corpse. Huh? Just them. wait till you get some young, beautiful girl in there. Just wait till you're undressing her and you're looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> that is so gross. The Don and Mike Show. Whoa. Coming your way. So get ready. Call Don and Mike anytime, toll free at 1-800-636-1067. They're ready to believe you. It's the Don and Mike Show, and they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Well, let's see. Dennis Murphy, alive. Alive! Buzz Burbank, Yes, alive. Yes, barely. Just barely. Details coming up. Hey, round-eyed goofball king, you will probably live eternally, won't you, Robet? Nothing can stop me. I've missed you too. I have. <laughs> you will be like some old pampers. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you know those old sure. diapers that they put in landfills that they yeah. say that they'll be there for years and years and years. Rob will outlive the cockroaches. That's me. I'll be eating the cockroaches. The cockroaches. <laughs> Cocky roaches. The cockroaches. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Matador, and all the ships at sea. You'll laugh so hard you'll rupture your colon. It's the Don and Mike show. Oh my God! I meant All that right. as a tribute. I know you did. Hello and thank you for listening, coast to coast and nationwide via Westwood Von Darley. Don Geronimo with Mike O'Meara right here. That's why we still to this day call it your cotton picking Don und Mike show. Put a pillow on your stomach and uh, say hello. Like the cats in Germany say, Don and Mike Uber Alles. Yeah, we are coming to you from the radio station without a spine, WJFK here in Washington, D.C. Our network is Westwood One. We have, we counted 58 affiliate stations. Wonderful. And over 4 million listeners and we thank you for your patronage. And this is normally where I look over to Buzz Buddy. This is a bummer. I look over there and I say, here he is to my left, to your right, it's the crotch cam or maybe the Hawaiian shirt cam. Or the parking space cam. 
But today the room is empty because Buzz is in the hospital. Guys, can we at least turn the lights on in there so it's not so totally depressing? It's it just, you know, I mean, why don't you just put black crepe paper in, hey, in the listen, studio? In honor of Buzz, do it like he does when there's a naked girl in here. <laughs> no, not that, not that, not that dark, Charlie. There you go. That's good. Very good. An empty studio. Boy, an empty studio where Buzz normally sits. Okay, hold on. Excuse me. I want to dedicate this opening of the show to Buzz Burbank. Please stand back while I whip this out. Perfectly done. There it is. Tight, bright, out of sight. Major market open to a big time show. Every day. Okay. Oh, boy. So, listen. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Mike's fine. Rob, yeah. eternally fine. Of course. Uh, Broyhill. <laughs> Broyhill is like rock. He'll yes. be, He'll be here. You know, past the nuclear wars. Of course he will. And what I mean by that is he's he's just always there. He's big and lumpy, and he doesn't do a whole lot. But yep. pretty much nothing can can take care of Broyhill. Not fragile. Right. Then you got Christine. Well, she's fragile. Yeah. She's fragile, but she's young. She's only been with the show for a short amount of time. That's right. And she's you know she's got that uh, that solid youthful stamina that uh, that all the youngsters have. Well, now all of the jokes that we've made about budget Buzz's advanced age, yes, and all of the jokes that we made about his problems with his butt. Oh, excuse me. He would say, "My gut, not my butt." Not the butt. It's the gut. It all happened. This, this was a, uh, a serious situation. Very serious over the weekend, something that shocked all of us, and we're not saying that lightly. We're saying that seriously because we both got uh, calls over the weekend from uh, Marsha, Buzz's wife. Buzz's colon burst. Yeah, he, his colon was punctured. It's not a cereal. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds like colon burst. Delicious new colon burst, now with fruit marshmallow flavored. No, man. I mean, he's, he's in the hospital, and it yeah. was uh, a near-death experience for Buzz. That's how very serious his whole situation was. Yeah, he has uh, diverticulitis and uh, one of them, uh, one of those little things just punctured his colon and uh, his appendix was all messed up and they went in and they took everything out from what I understand. Took out his appendix, took out a little bit of his uh, intestine and uh, and it's it's serious and very, very serious. He's uh, He got some great medical attention. Yeah, he sure did. Otherwise, uh, I mean, he was, that's the kind of thing that can in a very short period of time can kill, kill you. you. Yeah. You remember all the uh, stomach pains he'd been talking about on the show? That had all been a build up yep. to what happened to him on Saturday. Uh, now, both Mike and I have been to the hospital to see Buzz. Yeah, he's doing great. He looks... Looking know, real good. Looks as good as somebody with a bunch of tubes coming out of him can look. But he was sitting up. He's talking. He's feeling He's feeling as well as he can. I mean, for somebody who's had major stomach surgery. Yeah. That, when I was talking to him on the phone yesterday, after I found out about this, if you wouldn't have told me right. that Buzz was in the hospital... Yep. He sounded just like the same old Buzz as always. Absolutely. And uh, he lo the thing that we both said uh, in the office before the show is that he looks real good. I mean, his color is real good, and he's hanging in there. But this... You know, he was he was feeling poorly the beginning part of last week. Then he got the right medicine, and he was uh, he said every day he was feeling stronger until this thing happened Saturday, and he, he basically doubled over. Boom! Yeah, boom! And then uh, right to the hospital where I think in a matter of hours they they operated. Yeah. So he's going to be. I, I think this is the schedule. He's going to be in a hospital at least uh, seven to ten days. Right. And then beyond that, probably at home. Yep. For anywhere from six. So I don't know how many weeks. Right. So I've already started to put the stuff in motion that we're going to get a microphone installed at Buzz's house. Yeah, because he's got a very, this uh, type of procedure uh, requires a long recu recovery period. and uh, But he's already up and talking. He sounds great. And, uh, yeah. you know, he's going to be able to, to be Buzz. He's just not going to be able to be Buzz here. <laughs> I can't believe all this stuff happened to Buzz. It's all the stuff that we have all kidded each other about. Right. For a long time, as recently as last week's episodes of the show. Absolutely. We, uh, you know, it's amazing when something really happens like this and, and you realize that the stuff you've been kidding him about has really come to pass. Oh, you know, he had no idea, certainly, that it, that it was going to happen like right. this. I mean, I know you had, too. I had discussions with him off the radio last yeah. week about this, about, about the condition, you know down there and yeah. stuff that the doctor had said. So, uh, you know, our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers are with Buzz. And Marcia, his wife, too. Yeah. Oh, he's on the phone now. He's on the phone? He's on the telephone. Good. Now, he said he wanted to come on and make a brief statement. Yeah. He wants to say hello and say he's doing fine. Yeah, doesn't want to stay very long, and we're not going to push him. We don't want to kill the guy. All right, now, let me see. 
Has I, Tom Gavin called you in your hotel, or rather in your hospital yet? I've been on the phone with him constantly, Don. <laughs> Buzz, how, yeah. are you, how are you feeling? Any better than this morning? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I just wanted to call and let you know I'm going to be a couple of weeks late for work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you looked good. Don and I were both saying in the office, your color looks good, and uh, even though you got tubes sticking out of you, you, you look like you're hanging in there. Well, like you said, I feel as good as a guy can feel with that many tubes uh, sticking out of him, and uh, every good thing is going to be okay, I'm pleased to say. It's so wacky that, you know, I've never seen, I've known Buzz over 15 years and never seen him in a situation like this. Right. Um, now, he was up and walking today, which which is pretty miraculous for all the stuff that you had done to you on Saturday, right? Yeah, well, they're trying to get me out of here as soon as possible, and that's a good thing, you know, I'm, I'm happy about that. But, uh, yeah, we've been up and, and around and... Uh uh, you know, who knows what'll be next? Well, what you really should do is find a particular nurse that, uh, you know, can help you with bathing. The, the, the word nurse bubbles came to mind. <laughs> oh, bubbles the nurse, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, bu Buzz, um, yeah. your colon, uh -huh. which burst, uh -huh. okay, they're going to, they took part out and then they're going to put it back in? No, no, no. The part they took out is uh, not usable anymore, which is why it'll be on display at the Smithsonian. <laughs> <laughs> they take a section out, then they sew up the uh, the, the other parts together, and they, they just remove the bad part, right? Yeah, that's right. Remove the bad road and uh, sew it back together and uh, wait for me to dance again. Listen, I know that, uh, you know, you, oh, you, he's got his button also. He's got his Elvis button in there. Yeah, so we were right. talking about that one. Want to hear that beep? Same. Yeah, let's yeah. hear that, please. Uh, there you go. No. Now, did you just give yourself some painkiller? That's painkiller yeah, for me. I figured, yeah. I figured you were with us on the line. There you go. Uh, Buzz, I just want to say that I, I heard that you were sick in the hospital, mm -hmm. but all I heard is that you're strung out. Strung out. You're I, strung I, out. I don't know what happened. One minute I was laughing, reading the uh, autopsy report on Elvis, and the next minute I'm here at Baptist Memorial. <laughs> so, he still got it. He still got yeah. his sense of humor. I don't know. Guy Smiley right there, Buzz Burbank. Yeah. Michael J. Burbank. Well, <laughs> for goodness sakes, you know, certainly is a, an extreme way to get a little more vacation time. But, mm -hmm. but either way, uh, get well now. I will work on that. Thank you very much, all of you. And that bit about uh, your recovery period in South Florida, we're not going to be able to make that happen for you, Buzz. Well, I'm just going to have to get sicker. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, we are going to have the microphone put in your house. All yes. right. So, uh, you know, don't let that don't let that be your excuse never to come back into work again. Remind me to unplug that at bedtime. <laughs> oh, oh, would that be great? I forgot about the fun we can have one of those microphones oh, in his sure. house. Just leave it open with a tape recorder running all day. All right, well, well, listen, you big lug. Uh, Right. Enjoy your ice and whatever else they're feeding you. That's all you're getting right now is ice, right? Ice, that's it. Ice, ice, baby. Ice, ice, baby. Well, yeah. take care of yourself. Feel and, better, um, Buzz. Thanks, guys. I'll see you tonight. All right, take all right. care. Bye, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, boy. That's a kick in the ass. Sure is, and it's so weird to see somebody you work with every day who, uh, it, with the with the tubes coming out of him. And uh, but he, you know the uh, prognosis there's is very good that everything's going to work out for him. And and you know the the tough part's over. the The tough part was this past weekend. Yeah, that's serious surgery, man. Oh, I mean, that's my God. That's major, 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 serious, big time surgery. And the pain of that is really I, it's it's indescribable i mean it's like the worst worst stomach cramps you've ever had it's tough so listen you know all the kidding that we that we've done uh, to buzz <laughs> What can I say? We're going to continue to do that. Oh, we, yeah. We're just we'd gonna be wait. letting you, our audience, down if we didn't continue. Oh, we're just going to wait until he feels yeah. just a little bit better. Yeah, when Today, he feels a little bit better, we'll be revealing more and more details of his medical condition. <laughs> when I saw him this morning, I couldn't help. I would just, I would start goofing on him a little bit. Sure. And he would laugh back. And then he said, don't do that. Don't do that. And right, I, right. And I said, oh, but, hey, I'm sorry. And he said, no, 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 it's not that. He said, it hurts so much when I laugh. Yeah, yeah. He said it's Im it's impossible. I can't stand to laugh. He also he was told holding me, on to a pillow when I went to visit him. He told me he had the hiccups. Yeah, and the hiccups nearly killed him on Saturday oh, night. Oh God! <laughs> right. He said he's getting good uh, good care over there, and uh, and we wish him the very speediest of recoveries. Right. And I guess what they took out of him, uh, he said they took out the the parts and put them on a table and hosed them off like with a. <laughs> with a garden hose. Oh, really? Yeah, I, well, I know that they did much the same thing when they took that ab abstraction out of a Bart uh, during yeah, the well, Super Bowl. Yeah, when they That's a bummer, man. Mm -hmm. uh, really, everybody seriously should say a prayer for Buzz. I'm sure he's going to be fine. I uh, I got him to laugh when I first walked into his uh, hospital room because I went down to the old 
gift shop in the hospital and got a, a copy of a magazine. And I looked around, and uh, when I was in the hospital, I was telling you before, the best thing people brought me was uh, was light pornography. I found that to oh, be... They didn't uh, have any of that in the hospital gift they, shop. They didn't have any in the, uh, in the hospital gift not shop. Not even we? No, not even Club, Club, <laughs> Club or Penthouse or Playboy. <laughs> I was very disappointed. Not that I would have bought it anyway because there was a re really a sweet old lady behind the counter, so I didn't want to do that. But I did get him a uh, Woman's Day magazine because the uh, cover story was Eating Light. <laughs> Brought that into him, and uh, it had nice little shish kebabs right on, the, right on the cover. And his wife told me yesterday that, that one of the first things he said when he came out of surgery was, do you, do you think I'm going to be uh, thinner? How much... How many oh. sizes do you think I've lost off my pants now? Worked for me, Don. 35 <laughs> pounds. Worked for me. I, I, I wish Buzz the very best of luck. I think it's going to, you know. Hey, Buzz loses 35 pounds. He's going to be in trouble. Yeah, right. I hope he doesn't lose that much. Yeah. Me, I could go back in tomorrow. <laughs> You know, I, I, I really believe me. It's kind of a fantasy of mine. You know, everybody takes care of you. You get bathed, and you come out slim new me. And all you have to do is have your colon removed. Do you know, really, if you go back to the history of that, when I came out of the hospital, remember I lost all that weight, and I came uh, out, and you said that motivated you to get on your diet, where yeah. you lost all this weight. Meanwhile, since then, I've gained all that weight back, and now I want to lose weight. And now if Buzz comes back and loses a lot of weight, because he's been in the hospital, nah, <laughs> yeah, that won't nah, work nah, for you. Nah, it isn't going to happen. Yeah, forget about Blueberry it. Blueberry pancakes. So I think we're going to have uh, buzz updates as often as we can on the show. Good. Uh, we're going to keep going by and seeing him and, and calling him and, you know, sending him junk and stuff. Well, you know, as much as we can. <laughs> okay. I told him I'd be by to see him later in the week. <laughs> did you really? Yes, I did. Did you mean it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, of course I will. I, I am going to go by the, uh, you know, the the the, the bookstore and, and get, get uh, him some porn. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll never forget John Pop uh, brought me some uh, when I was. Yeah, round of applause for John Pop. Brought me some when I was in there, and it was the greatest gift because you know you read all the crap and it's tough. You don't want to get into a novel really because it's just blah blah blah. And all of a sudden, you know, naked pictures of people some and porn do oh, it for you. Huh? God, it was fantastic. Best thing, you know, for if you like that sort of thing. And I think Buzz does. Buzz does. I did, and it's it's just <laughs> it's wonderful because it holds your attention. Doesn't require. Any thought whatsoever, you just look and drink in all those wonderful naked pictures of people. Well, I'm going out tonight on my way home. I told them I'd stop by this, this book place that has a huge magazine wall mm -hmm. and pick him up a bunch of uh, magazines of the junk that he likes, like uh, home theater okay. and stuff like that. But perhaps I'll, I think they have... Uh, the 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 magazines and bags right yes okay you like know. the where you get three together and and the, I believe so the top one is usually a really good one and then inside you've got plumpers and uh, you know swank rejects that is the same uh, the same plan that they used to use with comic books right where they would sell you three in a bag and it would be Superman on the front <laughs> but inside it would be like a uh, Green Lantern <laughs> and on the back it would be something sucky like the Phantom it's the exact same thing that you're talking it's about it's a strategy that's been used by publishing houses for years, and it's not necessarily honest, but don't get him too much of that stuff. At least save that for me later in the week so he'll have something to look forward to. Okay, you know, maybe I won't get him any. I'll let all of that be uh, the special gift from you. Well, that, that good bookstore, I know the one you're talking about that's near the hospital, and I, you know, if you go in there and you, you load up on porn, you know, you got eight people looking at you when you bring that up to the counter. You know? Oh, do you really? <laughs> yeah, I've done it before. Okay. Many, many, many times. <laughs> many times. <laughs> so Buzz obviously will not be with us in studio, for goodness knows how long, you know, six, eight, maybe 12 weeks, we'll get the stuff working at his house. What this means is, until Buzz is out of the hospital right. and is into his home studio, mm -hmm. we will have guest news people. Wonderful guest news people sitting in for the ailing Buzz Burbank. Today, I'm going to give you a brief lineup of who's going to be doing the news in the coming days. Uh, today... Rudy Martsky. <laughs> yeah, Rudy Martsky, who happened to be in town now that he's moved down to Atlanta, Georgia. So Rudy's coming, and he's going to actually try to read the news. Then tomorrow, Lewis, the annoying intern. Oh, oh no! that's right. That's right. Big chance for Lewis and the... Symptoms. You are. <laughs> and then he was checking the uh, plugs to see if they were working. And, he, and he, he walked in, and he had the name tag, the big name tag that said Clifton. And Buzz, I knew Buzz was on the road to recovery. He said... What is it, Clifton? And then I immediately said, what now, Clifton? And uh, he looked at us and said, you guys, 
You guys sound like you're on the radio. <laughs> and that little smirk uh, perhaps indicated that people uh, know Buzz. Uh, you know, Buzz I think is so. There. Absolutely. I think so. I want to make sure that the uh, that the nurses don't get rid of all the souvenirs. Because mm -hmm. I told Buzz today when he gets the he's got the tubes yep. going into his nose and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he's most looking forward to getting rid of. Oh, absolutely. You know, he. I mean, he. <laughs> He's got about a gazillion tubes going in and out of him, but he's got this one on his nose that's really bothering him. Yeah. When he finally does clip that away and is able to 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 breathe without that, right? Perhaps we'll give it away on the show. We'll bag that up and oh, give it yeah. out to a real Buzz Burbank fan. All sorts of really good stuff. Not to mention, uh, I'd also like to give away the tights that he had on. Did you notice he had on tights today? Yeah, <laughs> those little those tiny little tights. That's I guess for circulation. All the stuff that's uh, been done. Uh, right. Want to put those on to make sure everything stays where it's supposed and to. And he had like uh, water shoes on today. <laughs> yeah, he did. Lovely feet. <laughs> we could perhaps give away some of his uh, some of his hospital gowns and stuff. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful idea. Maybe when I go see him tonight, maybe I'll just pill for something tonight. Buzz Burbank's medical souvenirs. Right. Available on the Donna Mike Show. Okay, so there you go. That's the update on Buzz, and we'll continue telling you uh, about him throughout today's show and all the way through his recovery. Now we got a weekend to talk about. I got tons of crap, mm -hmm. tons of daredevil crap to tell you about that I did over the weekend. Daredevil crap. Also, Dennis Murphy went to uh, Nevada over the weekend and he did not kill himself running the Bulls. He is not dead? No, he is not. All right. Whoa. Whoa. That's Dennis. Whoa. That's Dennis saying moo. So I guess he's at the bullpen. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Dennis talking to the Whoa. livestock. We've got a whole tape recorder full of Dennis's stuff. And we'll be devoting a large portion of the show to listening to that today. Here's another, uh, just a, a tease of that. Here's a brief snippet of Dennis actually running with the Bulls. I, I will wait For some to... reason, that's hard to understand. <laughs> really, Mike? <laughs> you know, uh, I said in the newspaper today, in Rudy Martsky's column, as a matter of fact, that the guy that put on the whole big running of the Bulls yes. deal in Nevada over the weekend, uh, the cops got him because he never got a permit. Oh! He, he never got the, the correct permit to do this running of the Bulls thing. <laughs> so he was arrested, but at least they, uh, they had the people run with the Bulls. There were a lot, about 1,000 people out there. Yeah, and in including our own Dennis Murphy, Lots of tape, lots of people from Las Vegas that uh, Dennis met. We'll be hearing all about that on today's show. Uh, also, you remember from Friday's episode, mm -hmm. Susan. Ah, uh, Susan, the lady that wants a husband. She is already here in the building. Aha! So what we're going to do is take a break. And you know what, Charlie? Please put Susan in the isolated green room. Susan! So that uh, Mike and I don't see her. Yeah, we want this to be special. I remember the description was a slightly heavier Julia Roberts with thinner lips. Right. Yeah. She is a gal who heard us talking on the show. Well, we'll find out, Rob. Bueno. Maybe there'll be some bueno arbusto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She is the gal who uh, called us up when she heard us goofing on that uh, freak in Minneapolis. Yeah, the guy that uh, had uh, his bride picked for him out there, and uh, we decided to, I guess she decided she'd call in and see if we could do the same thing for yeah. her. As far as we can tell. She's on the level. She works yeah. uh, as some kind of legal secretary. Mm -hmm. So she, she certainly has some kind of knowledge about uh, uh, the legality of the situation. Right. She would like... We, were gonna, we are going to interview her today mm -hmm. and find out what she's looking for in a husband. And then start the screening process. Yes, and then 10 days. <laughs> roughly the same schedule as Buzz's uh, release from the hospital. That's it. In roughly 10 days, if all goes according to plan, Susan will be marrying... A total stranger mm -hmm. on this show. That's right. We are, and we get to pick it. Yeah. We get to pick the right guy for her. And we told her we would really try to take it as seriously as we humanly possibly can. Yeah. I mean, it would be funny to pick the biggest loser we could find. Dennis Murphy. We wouldn't do that. No, no, no. Dennis has got plenty of other jobs on the show. So we're going to meet this gal, Susan, in just a second. We're going to grill her and find out exactly how serious she is about this. Good. Find out what, what spe a specific type of guy she's looking for how old, what kind of physical attributes. Right. And, you know, then we'll start the process, man. And, and it's going to be lickety split. He, uh, maybe we can find a guy that's, uh, you know, looks uh, just like Brad Pitt, only slightly heavier with no hair. 
And also with thinner lips, because Brad, Brad Pitt, we called him Brad Lip. Brad Pitt is another guy who does those big, big, big bulbous lips, right? I'm really looking forward to seeing Susan, though. You I got really the fish lips. When you, see, when you hear a description like that, it, uh, it arouses curiosity, and I know it arouses our listening audience. And she said, that, uh, she said she was surprised that no one else had called our show mm -hmm. to want to get married to a to a total stranger. Susan is an original. It's Said her Susan. original idea. Yeah. You're the first, Susan. That's right. So we'll bring her right in here. And while we're doing that, here's your first toe tapping touch tones of the day at 1 800. Susan, what would you think? <laughs> what would you think, Susan, about where, sir? It's a new station down here. Uh, it's in Berlin, actually. Berlin, uh, Germany? Ger Germany. <laughs> Germany. Hi, you're listening to WBER. <laughs> this is Berlin Radio. Uh, Bob Clay. You will listen. Bob used to uh, like to uh, have sex <laughs> and photograph it and then look at the pictures. Yeah, like there's nothing wrong with that, Colonel Blink. He enjoyed. It wasn't what I would call pornographic. Thank you, Todd. Oops. Oh, what did I do there? Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hey, I'm in, guys. I'm, right. I'm, I'm writing up my resume right now. I got a credit application in my job. I'm in. Seriously? I can spell, I can spell dancing, D-A-N-C-I-N-G. You're serious about <laughs> this, <laughs> right? I'm done. I'm done. What's, what's your first name? My name's Jim. How old are you, Jim? I'm 34. Why was you marry a total stranger? Bad previous marriage. Uh, I work a lot of hours. I make a super income. I got my own home. I'm, I'm a, a real nice guy. I just don't have time to date. And uh, did you think about this before we met Susan on the show? Or I've been after thinking about heard... it over the weekend. Oh, really? Okay, yep. so you've been thinking about this before you even saw <laughs> Beach towel time. You fall into the real desperate category. All right, fax us your stuff. Hello, Donna Mike. Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing? First time caller. Okay. And I'm calling to marry Susan. <laughs> oh, wow. Where are you calling from? What is your first name? My first name is James, but I go by Bernie. Okay, right. Yeah, I think I know a lot of James that uh, prefer Bernie. <laughs> and where are you calling from, James? Bernie? Uh, actually, I got off of the uh, Beltway as soon as I heard that she does not mind children yes. and uh, jumped onto a payphone. I guess if you called the movie Weekend at James' house, that would... <laughs> That wouldn't be worth <laughs> Bridget loves James. <laughs> James Kosar, her former quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. James Copel. Hey, come on now. <laughs> you don't need to berate me. This is my first time calling. We're playing the Bernie game. Slow down a second. I'm, and I'm running out. I'm running out of Bernie. All right, uh, fax us your stuff. Fax us your resume and a picture and all that other stuff. Okay. If you're serious. Well, I, I just wondered how serious she was. I mean, I listened to you guys on Friday, and... Uh, well, you heard her. What do you think? Well, I, I haven't heard her for the last five minutes. I've been on hold. Well, so. hold, on, hold on a second. I happen to know that they play the show down the phone line. Well, yeah, but you were talking to some other biker guy at that point. No, but you heard... Oh, you know... You know, I think I'm just going to disqualify you. Yeah, you, you're disqualified. Okay, Bernie James. You're too difficult. Go take care of your ten kids. <laughs> Don't have ten, just have one. All right. Okay. Too difficult. All right, goodbye. <laughs> He's just well. too difficult. You know, we ask him a legitimate <laughs> question. He, he hears the show on hold. I've been on hold for five minutes. All right, fellas. Facts in your stuff. <laughs> we'll start picking prospective contestants during this week. And next week we'll have a wedding. And that's not even... Oh, boy. There'll be so many headaches involved in this. Listen to our fine sponsors. Here's what we need. Mm -hmm. First off, we need a real reverend. Yes, we do. A real licensed um, religious... Is exploding colon, and then Susan coming by, and yes, Dennis Murphy in Nevada this weekend for the running of the Bulls. Did you oh see him? Uh, did you see him in his matador suit? It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Really? Did he live up to all of your expectations? He was disgusting. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, do you mean that in a nice way? I do. Oh, there you go. Okay. It was it was repulsive to watch him run behind the Bulls with his little recorder screaming, ah, ah, ah. So he didn't run in front of the Bulls? Uh, oh, no. You he was the last person to go. <laughs> He's the last person. And he took the first exit, right? Right. He, right. Ran, <laughs> he ran behind the Bulls. Yeah. Well, come on. We didn't want him to get hurt. No. no. All right. Thank you, Victoria. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Did you hear Dennis mooing like a cow? Um, I didn't hear him move when he was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he talking to? A bull here, Rob? Talking to a bull. He's talking to one of the bulls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, 
Come on, boy. Interestingly enough, that's the way Dennis sounds at closing time. Too. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye, Victoria. Bye. Goodbye. Now, we'll be right back, everybody. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. Behind all the bulls, right? With a, with a matador costume? He had a matador costume, and it was Dennis Murphy. Really? Funny. Dennis Murphy on Inside Edition? Funny looking. We get a little national television exposure with uh, Dennis? It was, yeah, it looked like a... Uh, uh, what's I don't know what channel Inside Edition is on. I don't know. We should have uh, hooked him up with like a uh, listen to Don and Mike T-shirt or something. That, but we were we were so concerned no, with door thing. Did it? He looked good. He he was gorgeous. <laughs> he was. All right. All right but, thank you. From uh, disgusting whoa. to gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Hello, is this Donna Mike? Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? It, great, thank you. All righty. I heard about your uh, trying to get this lady. Married on the radio, yeah. And I wanted to call and offer my services as photographer. You're a wedding photographer? Yes, I am. Oh, we can always use one of those guys. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Well, sure. Hold on, but now you'd have to, you know, donate everything—your time and the photos and stuff. Uh, yeah, it would be everything. Completed album. Everything. Hey, way to go! Oh, that's nice. Sure. Hey, hold on a second. All right. We'll give you some plugs if we figure out you're legit. Okay. Okay, great. Because you know, I love quoting MC Hammer. <laughs> Too legit. Too legit. Too legit to quit. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hey, guys, I had a celebrity spotting over the weekend. I said hammer. <laughs> it's hammer time. You're keeping that man's career alive. You know that, don't you? Yeah, hello. Yes, what, who'd you see? Well, I was in Ocean City this weekend, and I'm sitting in a bookstore talking to my sister about how I enjoyed flip-flopping radio stations the whole way to pick you guys up on Friday. And this lady comes up to my sister and says... Oh, me she did that. <laughs> I am so sorry. She was looking good, Don. Oh, my wife is a cutie. She's a hottie. I've told you that. A black fishnet little outfit with a pink uh, bathing suit underneath it. Yeah, great. pretty good. She's Very a, nice. She's a good-looking woman. Thank you. All right. Bye, bye guys. Bye. Yeah, so, we, so what happened? She uh, we were in Ocean City. She's this, very proud of you, and she's proud of what you do, and she likes people to know that this weekend. But it's embarrassing. She's up in yep. the bookstore, and she says that she's looking at magazines, and she hears just what that guy said. She hears right. the guy saying, "Hey, I finally found the Donna Mike show on the radio down here. Boy, it's mm -hmm. great." And she says she walked right up to them and said, "Hey, hello." I'm Don's wife, Frida. I said, <laughs> why did you do that? She gets excited. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, Christ, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I had to hide. She came back and told me that, and I said, where are they? Yeah. Right? Because I don't want anybody seeing me without my shirt on. <laughs> I don't care how much weight I've lost. <laughs> you know, though. So I spent the rest of the afternoon hiding from these people. I think it just, that's her way. She doesn't say it to you, but it's her way yeah. of saying she super digs the fact that you do what you do. And I and, and that's that's kind of cool. My wife's a, on a smaller scale a little bit the same way. that it, it, They think it's cool that uh, people listen to the yeah, show. I, and said, I said to her, I said, you're eavesdropping on something that people are saying, and then you walk up and just stick your hand out and introduce yourself to them? Uh -uh. She said, well, yes, it's very nice. And then she said, she said, um, I said, why'd you do that? And she said, well, because mainly when I hear people talking about your show, it's about how much they hate you. <laughs> <laughs> how people don't like the show. Yeah, well, I'm sure that... Uh, so you know, she, she heard something that, good, and she felt that she had to run over and reward them. Well, are you... If you're out somewhere and somebody uh, listens to the show and they see you, wouldn't you much rather... Well, maybe I'm not... Maybe you're not the same way I am with this. Wouldn't you much rather have somebody who says, hey, walks over you very nice to say, hey, I, I like the show and I listen to the show, way to go, or something like that. Sure. As opposed to the people that are, are in, you know, the clothing store behind the rack of clothes that are sitting there with a smirk on their face and then call two days later and say, hey... I yeah. saw you. See, I'd rather have people right up front with it than, than people that are kind of sneaky about well, it. Yeah, no, I, I don't mind. Hell, uh, I don't care. I, I, I guess I'm glad that anybody just listens to our show in the first place will be talking about That's it. That's true. That's true. It's just embarrassing. Oh. You know, my house frow out there. <laughs> Hello, I'm Frida. You know, wearing a big ass, uh, big uh, beach hat that she had on on Saturday. <laughs> well, hello. Hello. I couldn't help but overhear you. Oh, God. Hello. Hello. Hi, Donna Mike Show. Yes, I just wanted to tell you guys that uh, yes. Gillian Anderson kind of ruined the running of the Bulls a bit. Gillian Anderson? How did she do that, sir? Well, uh, she wrote a letter. She's kind of like with PETA and stuff. And she wrote a letter to the mayor of Mesquite saying, like, you know, this would, like, kill the Bulls and stuff. Of course, the mayor of Mesquite did not know who she was until someone told him. Huh? 
All right, so what happened? I mean, the, the event obviously went off as scheduled. Yeah, they, they, they moved it from Mesquite to this ranch over in Arizona. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> you know, we've got a whole bunch of tape of Dennis down there. The Matador had fun. We've got from Dennis Murphy with the Bulls. We have Dennis live on the radio with us. Dennis explaining how he was selected to run. Dennis greeting some of our listeners at his hotel. Dennis mooing and talking to the Bulls. Dennis touching the Bulls. Um, a couple who came out to see Dennis. Um, Dennis trying to get on television. Uh, boy, there's a whole bunch. Wow, Rob, how many segments did Dennis give us today? How many are there? There's a lot of them. There's 24 minutes. 24. 24 minutes of Murphy. I know there are a lot of people in our audience that are Dennis fans that are very excited about that. And a lot of people say, that's 24 minutes of the show I won't be listening to today. <laughs> to those people, let me just say that I will be fast-forwarding past yes. the non-entertaining moments. Very good. Of Mr. Dennis Murphy. Not that there's one solitary second right, oh. where he's not Mr. Entertainment. Major effing star, <laughs> Dennis Murphy. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing great, thanks. Met, uh, met good old Dennis down there in Mesquite. He's a hell of a guy. You were there running with the Bulls? Sure was. The only one remember me. My name's Jace. Your name is Jace? Where are you from, Jace? Uh, Sacramento. Uh, was, he, uh, was he sober? Uh, yeah, he seemed like it. I, he actually, he asked me for a ride back to the casino, but I, I didn't pick him up. I was hoping he got back there. I didn't see him at the casino on uh, oh, Saturday Dennis. night. Oh, Dennis. Was he wearing his Matador outfit? He had his Matador him? outfit on. How did he look in it? Uh, he looked good. He, he, he didn't want any part of those bulls, though. Oh, really? Yeah, he was a little scared of those guys. So is that true, what we've heard, that Dennis was running behind the bulls? I, I, didn't, I didn't see him running behind the bull. He told, I, talk, I spoke to him before we ran, and he said he wasn't going to run with them. And, uh, that's the, and then he, I said, well, I'd meet him after we run with the bulls. I'll give you a ride back to the casino, and that's the last time I saw him. Well, he did some running and, and went up like one of the escape hatches or something like that. <laughs> yeah, took it, was, the, it, it was all right. The bulls are pretty timid. He took the very first escape, as a matter of fact. I guess that they had a bunch of little safety chutes where you could get off the course immediately. <laughs> Dennis yeah, took just the 10-foot on, 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 on either side, they had them spread out probably like 65 feet apart. Uh, they dropped mean, one on you. They right. probably would have went right around you. Just dropped the S-bomb. The S-bomb, baby. <laughs> All right, goodbye now. Yeah, if she's online, put her online, please, Charlie. I've just been uh, told through the computer that... Shelly from KVBC. Shelly, oh, our good friend. You don't have her on the line? Charlie Broyhill, hello. Charlie Broyhill. Warning, warning, Will Robinson. I know you're all broken up about Buzz, Charlie, but if you could just take a second. <laughs> you know, I called him yesterday, right? I called Broyhill. Right. And I gave him the information about Buzz, mm -hmm. like the, the hospital he's in and the room number. Right. And I said, okay, here's blah, 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 blah. Here's the room, here's the hospital. And it was two seconds of silence, and he said, yeah. <laughs> and I said, why? He said, no, I said, what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> I said, come on. <laughs> come on, Broil. Send the man some flowers. So if you already have the information, why do I need it? You're a sentimental <laughs> fool, Charlie. <laughs> a true sentimental fool. I know. Did you guys send him some flowers from the station? Oh, first thing. Okay, good. That's been done. Okay, excellent. Yes. Yeah, he uh, has nice flower arrangements in his uh, ho in his hotel room. I keep saying that too. In his uh, hospital room. Did you bring him flowers? No, I brought him a magazine and a book. I brought him flowers. It's hard to find mm -hmm. masculine flowers, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm gonna bring him. Uh, maybe I'll put the uh, porno magazines inside, like. A dozen roses or something. <laughs> yeah, that's romantic. Hey, here you go, bud. <laughs> Hello, Don of Mike Show. Yeah, hey, this is Austin, Texas. This is not Shelly, is it? Excuse well, me. you know, I never asked Charlie Boy. Hold on a second. I never even asked Charlie Boy. What about Shelly? Oh, he's sitting again. Here he goes. He's getting him. He can move quickly when he wants to. He hey, he's coming into Buzz's studio. Hi, Charlie. Hello. No, that was just a message. I wanted to know if you wanted me to get her. Or oh, not. yeah. I'd love to know what Dennis was okay. doing this weekend. Very good. Okay, thanks. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike. Hey, are, are any of you young broadcasters out there amazed at how smooth our show goes? <laughs> That's I right. Say, I'm amazed. We're professionals. Of course. Yeah. I'm almost professional, as my name's Lewis. Yeah, I knew this was Lewis. Oh, Lewis. Why are you calling, Lewis? Actually, I was just uh, calling Charlie to get some details about tomorrow's big time event. And yes, I'll, I'll Lewis. Tomorrow, Lewis, you will be uh, sitting in Buzz's chair uh, presenting the news. No. You know how great that is? That is so nice, man. Thanks a lot. Yes! Thanks okay. a lot. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, Don and Mike. What, Lewis? I got, you know what? I don't really know how to handle this, but on Friday, I got my first piece of fan mail. 
And I'm um, wondering, do you think I should show up at this lady's house or what? How do you handle? Well, what was the nature of the fan letter, Lewis? Well, the 44-year-old woman named Debbie wants me. And, uh, oh. I'm, you know, she sounds hot. Oh, God. All oh, the humanity, all the fans. Uh, now, Lewis, when you say that you got a piece of mail, did it come to, to, to you here at the radio station? Yes, it did. WJFK, attention, Lewis. Do you have the letter there with you? Certainly. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's framed already, but yeah, I'll take it out of the frame. Yeah, All let's right. hear it. Yeah, we'd like to hear the letter to Lewis. This okay. is Lewis, our annoying intern, who uh, sadly was not killed on Friday <laughs> when he was broadcasting from the blockbuster video Blimp. He survived it. Yes, I was killed. It just, I am back. All right, come on, read come the on. letter. Come on, Okay, Lewis. here we go. Uh, the, the letters on stationery, uh, the border says, love, 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 love. <laughs> so I've got someone rabbit here. Lewis. You sound so appealing. You have a nice voice. You're a bit hyper, yet easygoing mixed in. So articulate, the words you use. That's quite a compliment, I know. I enjoy listening to you speak, and I am double your age, then add a year. 44 come October. Would you consider meeting me, dating, if you are available? I wonder a bit about your volunteering for the Viagra experiment with Dennis Murphy. Why don't you take Don or Mike's job? Oh, yeah, because you're so great, Lewis. Yeah, apparently. On the back it says, I don't know your taste in girls, and I don't know what you look like. Don used a word which would indicate, comma, you're short, comma, which is fine. Well, I thought I would try Debbie. And then her phone number. Lewis, Lewis, incidentally, you're wondering, he looks like a gerbil. Thanks. If you've seen Dr. Yeah. Doolittle, Lewis mm -hmm. looks very similar to the Chris Rock gerbil in but Dr. An annoying, Doolittle. But an annoying gerbil. Now, I'm just not an, that annoying. And I'm not that hateful a person. Am what do you I? mean? What do you mean you're not that annoying? That is not, you are super annoying. That is Lewis. not your judgment to make, Lewis. I'm friendly to everyone. Everyone. Oh, uh, Lewis, you are but annoying. You're the most annoying intern we have ever had. Oh well, wait till I'm in that studio tomorrow. You have no idea. Let me tell idea. you something. I'm gonna you, really crank up the annoyance, buddies. <laughs> you look up annoying in the dictionary. There is Lewis, an eight by ten picture of Lewis. <laughs> you're hanging by a thread with us, Lewis. Oh. I just want you to know you're hanging by a fingernail with us constantly. Oh, gosh. Well, what do I do to maintain my standing? Don't come in early. I yeah, don't, <laughs> don't come until 6 o'clock. But Charlie told me 5.30, and I was hoping maybe I could just come uh, hang around. No, 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 no. Just like, come in and... Talk to you during commercials no, come and in interrupt and, your fun. No, come in and read the news. That's all. And as a matter of fact, hold on a second, and please give the, uh, the phone number of your lustful fan mail to Charlie because I think Mike and I should call that lady up and see what's happening with her. Absolutely. Hook it up, all right? I mean, I am available. All right. <laughs> All right. Hold on there, Lewis. Oh, the horny side of Lewis. Damn, he's annoying. <laughs> Lewis the really intern. Annoying. Hello, is this Shelly? Yes, it is. Okay, here is Shelly from KVBC. <laughs> 105.1 FM in Vegas, our station there in Las Vegas. Uh, Shelly, did you uh, end up hooking up with Dennis this weekend? I did yesterday. You did for yesterday? For a long time. I noticed you didn't meet him at the airport. Well, I had a luncheon to go to. Dennis and I had, had a conversation on Thursday prior to what every, every phone call that I got, nasty phone call from our listeners on Friday. Really? Why would our listeners call you with nasty phone calls? Well, geez, they expected me to be at the airport, and I wasn't there. I talked oh, to Oh, you should have told them to kiss your ass if they cared so much. <laughs> They should have been there. There was two people at the uh, at the airport to meet them. Three. I believe three, including three. Rob Grippy. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm not counting Rob Grippy, man, oh, who lives sorry. in his car. That would be four, I think, with him, right? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, and anyways, um, I had talked to Dennis and I before, told him that it was possibly a chance that I wouldn't be able to be there, but I would definitely pick him up Sunday morning, so I went and got him yesterday morning, we spent four or five hours together. Oh, lucky oh, lady. Well, <laughs> Shelly, you, you paid your dues. Yeah, I did. Then My you God. know what the magic of Dennis Murphy's all about now. Yeah, magic. Did How you did... uh, dine with him? I did not dine with him. No, I did not. Was there a lot of car travel involved? There was a lot of car travel involved. Boy. Gave him a little tour of the station. He did some promos for us. He Got did to see promos. a couple people here. He loves doing that. Yeah, he loved it. He, we listened to the, I had taped all the stuff that you guys did last week with me, and so he got to listen to everything, bits and pieces that he hadn't heard. So whenever, he was, uh, when, whenever you would park the car, would you leave the engine running with the air conditioning on? <laughs> I didn't have that problem, Mike. Oh, okay. I, Dennis is very sweaty. Yes, he He is. wasn't sweaty at all. He was sitting out there. We could immediately tell uh, the other girl that works with me, Michelle, we went and got him on Sunday morning. We got there about 11 o'clock, <laughs> through, flew through the ballet, opened the door, he jumped in, and we kept right on going back to Vegas. There you go. So, what did you what did you guys talk about for that long five hours in the car? 
You know, truthfully, a lot about you guys. Really? really? I was just very... In- See, I've been listening since you guys went on the air, and I just find it so fascinating to to ask him about people that he's seen that I don't really know. So basically it was me, you know, asking a whole lot of questions and I, him trying to get information about me. And here's the very important question, Shelley. Um, at what point did Dennis hit on you or ask you good to go to lunch or to dinner? Or Actually, it was when he was getting out of the car as I dropped him off at the airport. There was at least... <laughs> Two million people getting off at the Southwest. I mean, it was four cars deep. I was, like, maneuvering the new three truck in any, between. Uh, and he asked you for your phone number? Well, no. He just said, God, I really wish I lived here. You are so cool. And I really wish I would have spent more time. And I felt bad because I didn't realize that he, you know, stuck in Mesquite is a pretty sad situation on a Saturday night. So next time he comes Whoa. out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Dennis stayed in Mesquite Saturday night, didn't go back to Vegas for the uh, big casino action? No, I guess there was a bunch of people out there, um, as you've been getting phone calls, on Saturday morning, took him to lunch. He hung out, he lost some money, and then he said Sunday morning he won the money back, and we had a great conversation on the way back. I took him down the strip so he could at least say that he... You know, did the strip. I'd pay for a picture of Dennis Murphy in some casino playing cards. I would pay for that picture just of him sitting on the table playing blackjack. Hit me! <laughs> <laughs> so you would rate it a successful weekend with Dennis Shelley? I would, I, yes, I. Professionally successful. Professionally successful, and personally, I think he's a great guy. I really had a good time talking to him. He, he informed me of a lot of things that make it a lot clearer when I listen to your show now. Oh, really? Like what? Well, I was wondering what Grippy looked like. You know, I oh, Rob had a, yeah, right. I had, kind of had a vision. And tell you the truth, I told Dennis, I said I thought he looked. I he, for some reason, I kept thinking carrot top. I don't know. No, Dennis, that's what I'm saying, you know, six foot tall, very very skinny, with just hair everywhere. That's no. I, but I kept picturing him. Oh, and you talking about Grippy or Dennis? I was talking about Dennis. Dennis. And then we were asking about. I was asking about Dennis, or and I was asking about Grippy. I was asking about Bridget, and he gave me very very high compliments to myself. <laughs> so it was just it's you know getting the little bits and pieces that not a, a long long time listener, but somebody that really enjoys your show. And I sit here and listen for four hours a day, and it's... Oh, well, thanks, Shelly. It's That's nice. Did you have to armor all your car? <laughs> <laughs> I did get a car wash afterwards. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe a little more than that. A, a good detailing <laughs> will be in order. I gotcha. Think. All right, Shelly, thank you for uh, all the extra work you did this weekend. No problem. Appreciate it. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye. See ya. That's Shelly. She's a friend of ours out in Las Vegas. She works at KVBC. Mm-hmm. Here's the man who fell in love with her over the weekend. Hello, Murphy. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, his triumphant return. Major effing star Dennis Murphy. Once again, here's Dennis Murphy. That's what we've just heard, Dennis. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to take that show tonight. Okay, yeah, good. Listen, hold, hold on a second. I need to talk to you about your trip. You and then, do? then we're going to listen to some of your tapes. Yes. Uh, I can tell you about my tongue kiss, too. Tongue, tongue kiss? kiss? Yeah. Really? Yeah. With a woman? Yeah, uh, like after the, like after the, uh, one, uh, oh, I bet that tasted good. Hotel, and I got to know the school, and we were talking, and... All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wow, all right, a bonus. Hold on, Dennis. <laughs> hold, hold on a second, we're coming right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 90... Yeah, right. Also, um, I gotta, at some point, I gotta talk... Hey... Oh. Here's the first thing Dennis captured on digital audio tape for us. It's Dennis doing a live cutaway for our station out there, 105.1. Very good. Here we go. Dennis, come over here, man. Hey, okay. uh, Kelly. When we get going here in a little bit, phone she'll she'll hold the mic to you. Just okay. talk right. like you're talking into a microphone. Don't, don't take the phone from her. Yeah, just say hi. And what is this, the disc jockey giving Dennis the setup? Helping him out, yeah. Yeah, Dennis uh, getting his, you know, hey, he's a veteran. He's a pro. He's a major effing star. <laughs> we'll have you say hi, and yeah, she'll probably ask you how you're doing or yeah. whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. It'll be kind of quick. Going on in about okay. 30 seconds. Oh, I yeah. You want me to hand it over to Dennis? Just, and just hold it. Hold it. You'll hold it to me. All right, because you're in.
Aren't you amazed when you hear tapes of other DJs like this? With setting, all this, this setting the whole thing up? All this bull ass where they all pretend they're working at Mission Control. You know when me and Mike go out to do a show? You know what we do, really? <laughs> we just say, point to us when the microphone is on. <laughs> That's it. We don't have any countdown. No. We don't have any kind of preparation time. No. I mean, you know, why explain? I mean, maybe we're doing it wrong. No, we're not. I tell you, what we're doing <laughs> is the right thing. And, you know, when people are going to come on the show, put the, put the microphone in front of them and ask them a question. You don't need to go through all this. All right. Just Tell me when he starts talking. Look at this. Yeah, Roger. I'm going on the air on 105.1 Hot Talk. I'm going to cook a mic on. Way to go, Dennis. All right, a little behind the scenes radio. A little espionage. Can't wait to hear this guy. Okay, here we are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kelly, it's going great out here. We're in Mesquite. We're having a good time. Let me tell you something. These bulls are me. That's Shelly, I don't care what anybody says. They got. I don't think that's Shelly. You back it up a little, Rob. I think that's just some lady DJ they have, right? Because Shelly's promotions. I didn't think that's she right. was on that's air. Right. We want to here, like, it up right here. Uh, Thanks, Kelly. Hey. Hey, Kelly, it's going great out here. We're in Mesquite. We're having a good time. Let me tell you something. These bulls are mean. I don't care what anybody says. They got horns the size of... Uh, they're huge, I want to and they're mean. <laughs> also, we got Dennis Murphy out here from the Don and Mike show. Dennis, are you nervous about running with the bulls? Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, hopefully I'll get cool. <laughs> <laughs> you outfit, Kelly. Uh, it's going well. It's hot, and it's frightening. Take it, Pat. All right, here's the thing, though. The problem is with this Matador outfit, he doesn't have his damn pants on because they didn't fit. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, you get here, it's real easy to come to Mesquite if you're coming. Wait a minute, I mean, he just has on the Matador top and his regular shorts? You know, when he said it didn't fit, I thought he was talking about something else. Yeah, me too. His Matador pants, obviously. <laughs> so he had on the Matador top and just and white his, shorts. And white shorts. <laughs> And they had, yeah, like the retarded Mickey Mouse had them, that Matadors wear. I want to see that picture in the paper. By the Sacramento Bee, Mike. Out of Vegas, take 15. You take that north and then just exit, look for the signs, and you'll get here real easy. Kelly, wish you could be here. Wish all of Las Vegas could be here. We're having a great time. Come out on, here. Show everybody up. can come on out here and join us. They've got actually about an hour. Uh, until the run starts, and from what I understand, Johnny they're doing a time. second run. So come on out to Mesquite and join us at the first ever bull run in the United States. Hot Talk 1051. <laughs> that was like a hot remote. So, no, so you just... Uh, yeah, I do last minute no notice. Uh, yeah. I didn't know till Wednesday afternoon. Right. Oh, this is Dennis now still being interviewed, and he's explaining why he was selected to run. And for all you young broadcasters that are looking to get into the business, if you want to really be effective on the air, listen to Dennis's breathing technique. Oh, no, no. Uh, they were on the, the show. They were talking about it. They're sending you out here. Yeah. There are three people, Lewis, uh -huh. you, and I forgot the last one. Yeah, uh, I think it looks Rod Glickley. That's it, that's but, it. But, you know, Rod Glickley <laughs> looked at the uh, uh, airport. Yeah, because he met me, but uh, he was unable to show up. <laughs> I'm sorry, this cracks me up so much <laughs> to think that on a Saturday, right. some guy on KVBC is interviewing Dennis, <laughs> and they're discussing <laughs> Dennis... Lewis and Rob Grippy. I love it. Right? And it's not during our show. No, it's great. So funny. Swear to God it is. Uh, you have a look. Yeah, I was uh, listening, and you called in, so you got to go. So, uh, are you calling me? Did you come out here, uh, got your hook, my bit on the Donna Night show? Yeah. Uh, so, so you were listening on Hot Cut 105.1, saying, hey, uh, uh, you know, like, Donna Night's going to send me out here, and... And that's why you showed up, right? Yeah, I showed up. I, it's great. I, I live in Las Vegas and and uh, wanted to come over to Mesquite. I heard you were going to be out and said, hey, let's go see. Oh, thank you. I was showing up. But uh, it got nice. This is a great time out here. We're in the middle of the desert, mountain car over, all around us. It, he's trying to paint a picture now like we yeah, told him to. He's being a real broadcaster. Picasso. It's crazy, but right now it's filling up, man. I cannot wait. Until the running of the ball. What a journalist. <laughs> hey, Jim, is there anything you want to say to Don and Mike? Hey, Don and Mike, I listen to you every day. It's a great, great time, great show. I really enjoy y'all. 
Make the day go by. Okay, I can't cry, Jim. I'll see you later. <laughs> I'll see you all excited. Oh, God, hey, Mike, I have another fan of you. A Las Vegas listener. <laughs> Is this listener drinking? Yes. All right, listener, back it up a little, Robbie. Let's hear all of this. This is Dennis interviews a guy who has had a couple of drinks. <laughs> You'll see why. Hello, God. Hey, Mike, I have another fan of you. A Las Vegas listener. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, my name's Kim, and uh, I listen to 105.1 in Las Vegas. And I love Don and Mike, and I'm going to run the Bulls, and I'm going to slap the Bulls. And I'm going to, uh, the Bulls are going to be sorry they ever saw me. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Kim, I have a question. Kim, I have a question. Have you been drinking a couple of beers? Yes, and I plan on drinking a hell of a lot more before I get in the ring with those bowls. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Kim, I wish you luck. And uh, uh, it's great to meet you. All right, we're going to skip ahead now. <laughs> You already have. Yeah, I'm bored already. How many three minutes into it, and uh, we are already four. four <laughs> Rob, let's go all the way here to where he meets a guy from Portland. Is that okay. Portland, Maine, or Portland, Oregon? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's Lodge 559. I was riveted, Don. Mm, sorry, Mike. <laughs> That's why they pay me the big bucks to make those tough decisions. <laughs> Okay? All right, here we go. I'm fast-forwarding now. <laughs> saving you about eight minutes. Oh, man, that's well, God, quality. Are you running? Yes. Uh, uh, where are you from? Uh, Portland, Oregon. And wh what's your name? Ron Ellsworth. Mm, so, uh, what is making you run with the ball? What makes me want yeah, to? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to 7-Eleven. <laughs> 7-Eleven. <Seven -Eleven. laughs> Dennis meets people who used to live in D.C. Very good. Okay. Okay. Got it. Oh, Mike, uh, I have some uh, two listeners that used to live in Washington, D.C. And, and what's your name? Julie Craig. And Julie, and what's your name? Paul Craig. Hey, Paul. So, uh, why did you move out to M Nevada? Because we had enough of the damn rat race in D.C. and needed to start a new life. All right, we uh, lived in uh, Waldorf, Maryland. Wouldn't you want to move from there? <laughs> Good line. What brought you out to one All right, let's go to <laughs> Paul the Cabinet Maker. Okay, 822. No, no, go past that. Go to a couple who came out to see Dennis. It's log 0954. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the edit studio. <laughs> We are editing down Dennis's thoughts. Gotcha. What's your name? Rex. So what brings you out to one of the balls? Oh, to see you. Oh, did you come out just to uh, see we missed, me? We missed you at the airport. Yeah. Oh, did you, did you go to the airport? No, we didn't. We weren't able to get there, so yeah, we came really out here instead. Yeah, because, uh, uh, you know, I, when I arrived at the airport yesterday, I have four people. He's not even uh, talking into the microphone uh, now. I so, Do you uh, hear how off mic yeah. he is? Yeah. Uh, it's like Larry Bud Melman working the microphone. <laughs> I wish you could have heard the first 10 minutes of the tape, which was unusable. I think eventually someone from the station helped him out because there was times when talk, you... Talk, talking on the microphone? Yeah, I mean, you couldn't eat. It was not usable. Okay. So this is good, really. Very good. Okay. Uh, uh, retail. Uh, retail? Yeah, it's a life. Um, so, uh, what are you doing, man? Play bingo. Play bingo. All right, let's go to 1058. I like this part. <laughs> This is the last person that Dennis interviews before he actually runs oh, the good. Bulls. All right, good. Okay? <laughs> Mr. You want to hear every second of this? <laughs> How about we put this all on a cassette for you tonight? You can listen oh, to it on the yeah. way home. Absolutely. I'll, I'll play it for my family. Okay. <laughs> Welcome up, Joe. What's your name? Uncle Johnny. What's up, man? Oh, Uncle I'm Johnny. Uncle Johnny. <laughs> We used to know a disc jockey named Uncle Johnny. <laughs> Uncle Johnny and his Kiana shirts. <laughs> what brings you out to run the ball? I think I come the furthest than anybody. I come out here all the way from Rehoboth Beach. Rehoboth Beach? What is that? It's feedback at the event. Feedback at the uh, event. Oh, so he was standing like in front of a speaker? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Talking into the wrong end of the microphone. <laughs> uh, I'm going to I'm not hey, too far. You were down there at that house with that party with them yeah, girls, right? Do Dewey Beach. I'm I know. I know, I know where the Dewey Beach house was. I was down there. We have binoculars. We was checking you guys out. Oh, I spoke. Uh, what you do? For somewhere out there, there's a hedge waiting for you <laughs> to make an artistic statement. Well, I I don't buy. I told you guys I well, I don't do that no more. Couldn't right? you put some more plastic string on the trimmer? Well, no, I I I told you I don't do it no more. 
I, what, that's you don't wear I, goggles or you, you don't? Oh, no, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I work for a different company now. Right. What do you do now, Rodrigo? I, uh, I help put in the uh, irrigation systems. Oh, oh well, okay. Well, that's... I it's a big business. Yeah. Is this work that involves perhaps uh, a shovel? Yeah, sometimes the shovel, you want to dig, you got to dig a hole, you got to dig up a break in a line, you got to, you know, you got to get down there, yeah. Shovel equals amigo. <laughs> that means, that? I was just saying in your native language, the shovel is your friend. Oh, well, yeah, he can, he, he, he can help you out sometimes, that's right. And then uh, you get off early, Rodrigo? Well, I, no, I work about, I work 10 hours a day. It's a, it's a long day, I think. I think. Well, it sounds like you work very hard, and then you, you know, use up all your your money in cell phone bills. In the set, what's that? Are you using the company cell phone, Rodrigo? Oh, he's got to be. Right, you're okay. on. The, are you what? on the Are you on the foreman's telephone right now? Are you sitting in an extended cab pickup truck right now, Rodrigo? In front of Seven oh, Eleven? No, if I do that, I get in trouble over there. Right. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, listen, uh, Rodrigo. Nice talking yeah. to you, but you you had them mixed up. Dennis Murphy went to run with the Bulls. He came out fine. Poor Buzz Burbank had some emergency surgery because his colon burst on Saturday. Oh, he my will, God. He will be missing in action for a while on the show. Oh, my God. He's, he's, he works on the show, huh? Yeah, so tonight when the... you pray, first I want you to, of course, um, let's see, you probably pray to John Deere first. Thank right, you for yeah, making well. such a superior line of lawn care products. Very low maintenance. <laughs> and then, uh, then, then after that, well, you I, probably pray for the garden weasel. Yeah. Another great invention. I pray that uh, they got well, a weed eater that helps your people well, with I, their lawn yeah. work. And then maybe you could have a, a prayer for Buzzito Burbank. Well, yeah, yeah I, I, I hope he's going to be all right because it's, uh, that's, I can't believe it. I heard it. Yeah, well, terrible. now now believe it, Rodrigo. He is our number one news bambino, and uh, he is, uh, you know, he's hurting. So tonight, pray to John Deere, Garden Weasel, Scott's Turf Builder, <laughs> and Buzz Burbank. Okay, okay, guys. Well, okay, I, I thank sorry, you. I, I got, got the things mixed up. I, I right. uh, you know, I listen to you guys. Well, oh, it right. seems like we've Sorry. lost Rodrigo. All right. Buenos ding dong dili dia, senor. <laughs> there he goes. Hello. <laughs> See, he had it all mixed up. He thought it, Dennis was Buzz and Buzz was Dennis. That's yeah, amazing. Senor Buzz and Senor Dennis are two totally different people. Hello, Donna Mike. How you doing? Hello. Is this Donna Mike? Yeah. What's up, my guys? Hey, my friend. What you doing? W what do you think we're doing? Working. Right. Hey, I wanted to talk to you guys about FIFA. About who? FIFA. You F know, the FIFA. soccer, World Soccer Organization. Oh, that, you know, I almost forgot. Today's show is so jam-packed. I want to make sure we call France mm -hmm. so I can tell those stupid French people that soccer is a sucky sport. <laughs> oh, and really? I hope they all riot that's and why, kill each my, other that's, tonight. That's, that's what I hope. Your ass. What? What? That's, that's why, my, that's why my, when we played soccer against your country, we kicked your ass, right? Who are you Are you from France? Or are you an Iranian? I'm Iranian, dude. Oh, right. my God, an Iranian. Listen, I went through this a long time ago with you I guys. I know. I wanted to follow up on it. I never, never got a chance to. No, I'm sorry. We don't have time for any Iranian follow-up calls. I'm sorry. Who's next on the stereotype corner? <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> hey, Don and Mike. Hey, Baldy. Um, remember that chick that used to call your show Scary Kathleen? Yes. She died over the weekend. And we she was in a fatal car accident. And I just thought I'd call and tell you. Tell her no! Tell her no! <laughs> That was, that was a little Debbie guy. Another prankster. Hello. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, it's really great talking to you guys. Hey, you know the thing about the, the wedding? No, I'm not interested in going Oh, along. you mean Susan? Oh, and listen, I've totally forgotten to play Dennis Murphy's tape of him running with the Bulls. We'll do that in a second. Yes, about Susan, the woman that wants to marry a total stranger on the show. The greatest thing about this on your show is that it wasn't your idea. This is a caller out of the blue. Yeah, we were very grateful to Susan yeah. because this is something that uh, Don recognized early on as uh, as pay dirt. This is going to be great. And it's then, great. And then the bonus was when Susan came in and she, uh, you know, she has that kind of naughty hottie quality about her. Yeah, she's serious. And you've got your radio up too loud. 
Well, I'm trying to. Uh, it's too far away. You're trying to listen is what you're trying I'm to trying do. I'm trying to listen to yes. you talk. Right. Yes. It's really great. <laughs> right. Yeah, Calling from Burlington. Signing off. See ya. Okay. okay see right. you later. Eat me raw <laughs> with a flavor straw. <laughs> I used to write that in guys' uh, uh, yearbooks all the time. <laughs> Eat me raw with the flavor of straw. Yeah. <laughs> After everybody got sick of don't let your meat loaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least you kept the material fresh. And you know what? Well, back when I was in junior high, mm -hmm. I can only really fess up to this one time in junior high. Right. I actually, with my left hand, wrote a couple of ins ins uh, in inscriptions in my yearbook uh -huh. from girls. Oh, really? Just to fake it? Yeah, well, a lot Do of my... Do you still have the yearbook? I think so, somewhere. If you ever find it, we'll I, bring would it love, in. I would love to see where... To show my friends. I just said, to see how cool it looked? I said, no, to, because all my friends had girls that signed their yearbooks. So you wanted to be uh, one of the guys... And one so of the you, cool guys. You faked it. Yeah. Uh, only the, the girls writing probably looks like somebody wrote it with their foot. Oh, it's pretty credible, I think. <laughs> you know, for eighth grade. You used your other hand, though? Yes, I used my left hand. And it, you were able to do it <laughs> yeah, uh, successfully? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't show it to a lot of guys. You know, we uh, at my high school, our cheerleaders, uh, when I went to school, were not that uh, gorgeous, let us say. Yeah. So one of my buddies uh, actually, I think his name was David Walsh, and actually signed my yearbook to uh, Dear Mike, and he wrote it right over the faces of, of the cheerleaders. And I'll always remember him for that. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a very nice chuckle. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Don. Hey, hello. Hi. hi. I don't have anything important to say. I just wanted to call and say hi. Hello. Hi. I was at the um, infa infamous appearance at the Sharks Club. Oh, our, like, Las, our Las Vegas-style show? Yeah. Right. I was Ella's gal pal of the evening that night. Yeah, oh. good time was had by all. You know, Miss Ella's coming by to uh, fill in for Buzz one day this week. She's going to be uh, delivering nude news. Well, I wish she would call me. Oh, well, she might need a copy, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Well, Hello. Hello? I'm on, a, I'm on a cell phone, so. Oh, did we break up on you? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think you did. Okay, all right. Hold hold on a second. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, uh, you know the great thing about those yearbooks? Hello? No, what, what's that, Mumbles? What? Um, well, you can erase some of the faces on them. Because when I was in a... Uh... <laughs> I'm in uh, junior high. People make fun of me. I know what he's talking about. Oh, I know. Where you, you take, a pencil, take a pencil eraser. And you, you erase the face and you draw something else in. Yeah, right. like a stupid, funny little... People you don't like. You could like Absolutely. Yearbooks can be very, very uh, liberally abused. Yeah, I did that a lot, too. Thank you. No problem. Goodbye. All right, listen. Well, now we got to do a break. And okay. when we uh, come back... Oh, how are we going to get all this crap in? I guess we'll start by listening to Dennis Murphy actually running with the Bulls in, in Nevada. Yeah, you can hear his athletic ability. <laughs> that will be next, and we'll, then we'll see what after that. This is the dawn. <laughs> I like this. How you, he just said, How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Show Ms. Murphy. Oh, God. more. No. Is that, is it, is it over? Uh, oh, oh, oh. He's breathing hard. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We have cleaning devices around the golf courses. You know, those things you squish up and down. Well, one golfer didn't use a wet towel or any cleaning device. He, he licked his balls clean. It sure beats a pickaxe in the gonads. The Don and Mike Show. Thanks, Dude Walker. Here are the toes, tapping touch tones. We'll take call 100 right now. Give you something partially made out of plastic. Qualify you for the next big free money show to pay your rent or mortgage. Caller 100 right now, and good luck at 1-800-636-1067. It's a weird day today. That's, there's just no way around that. You know, if you've missed any of today's show, you're bad listener, because today's today's been jam-packed, man. I mean, just relax, Steve. <laughs> there's There are guys in Rudy Marsky's entourage. Yeah, Rudy just comes rolling in. He's you know how when you see, like, Eddie Murphy go somewhere, and he's got, like, 100 guys with him? 
Rudy has the equivalent of that, <laughs> except Rudy is white, <laughs> and instead of ten guys, he only has two guys. He with has him. two guys in, in his entourage that he brings <laughs> that he brings with him today. And they're both making themselves at home right now in the studio, <laughs> kicking back, reading the newspaper a little bit. <laughs> right today, Just chilling out. Today we had the the, the news about Buzz. Then we had uh, this lady, Susan, come by, and she wants to marry a guy on the show, a total stranger in the next 10 days. Then we had uh, Dennis Murphy yep. and his re report with the bull. And now, joining us from Buzz Burbank studio... Slide over to your right a little bit, Rudy. Here to help us yeah. with news and comment today is guest news guy Rupert Marsky from USA Today. With his Sally Jesse Raphael... Little uh, half glasses on. How you doing, Rudy? Hello, guys. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. Man, those glasses are so yeah. red. Did you get those at the drugstore, too? Actually, I don't even need them since my news writer, Rob, wrote it so large. Well, I thought of you, Rudy. Okay. He wrote your real big cue cards. Yeah. Now, those glasses that you have on, Rudy, yes. did you buy those at CVS or some drugstore chain? Yes, and, and they're about used up. I need some new $9 glasses. <laughs> You know, seriously, you're going to have you're going to be 65 and having eye <laughs> surgery because you get those out of the drugstores. <laughs> well, I got to clean them. That's a big thing. And you heard about Buzz, of course, right? Yes, I did. And uh, my uh, heart goes out to Bud. Buzz. 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 <laughs> his name is Buzz, Rudy, not Bud. <laughs> Bud. Bud. And his wife. How does that work in your brain? When well, Buzz, when I'm Buzz, who bud. you know I, becomes Bud. I, I'm thinking Bud, you know? And, and, You're thinking and, Bud. That's, yeah, of course yeah, he yeah. is. That's what he's yeah. thinking about. Well, uh, Buzz had some serious medical problems over the weekend, if you're just tuning in. This is not a joke. His colon burst. Mm -hmm. And he's in all kinds of uh, bad shape. It, it could have been lights out for Buzz. Yeah, it was uh, hit or miss. They uh, did emergency surgery and now Buzz is doing very well. The prognosis is excellent that everything's going to be uh, fine with uh, with uh, down there, of which we do not speak and everything should be okay. He's going to be in the hospital for like 10 days and then he's got to be at home recuperating for, uh, I've heard everything from six weeks to maybe six months so we're getting him a line put in mm -hmm. to his house so he'll still continue uh, to broadcast on the show but until Buzz gets out of the hospital and he can do that, that's right. every day we're going to have someone Someone from the outside come in and, and read news, mm -hmm. and today it's Rudy Martsky, who really doesn't need those cue cards because he's so well-informed and plugged in on all the current events, right? You work for USA Today. That's right, and, and I'm here working with a, a new guy in the studio. I don't even recognize this guy that's behind the main mic. Uh, you, know, you know, if I was a woman, I would pick you up, you know? Well, thank you, Rudy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I wish I could return the favor. <laughs> Rudy's a little uptight mm -hmm. about this, so he's, he's sucking up to you a little bit just yeah, to, uh, right, to get right. things underway. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, Rudy. <laughs> well, I enjoy I, a good sucking up as much no, as, as much I don't want to like have people forget Buzz in the first day, so this will not go that smoothly. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. we right. you have mm -hmm. to try to make that happen, right? right. That wouldn't yeah. happen on because its own. Otherwise, yeah. you would yeah. be so great, people yeah. would be calling up, going, "Buzz, who?" That, well, that, I, I I wouldn't want that to happen. Rudy, what is, I can guarantee that won't yeah. happen. What is your lead story tonight, Rudy? And that's an attractive golf shirt, incidentally. What's that made out of? Paper towels? <laughs> it's borrowed from Steve Buckhans. Very, very nice. He's not shirt. anticipating golfing today. Steve Buckhans, who is a member of your entourage and mm -hmm. reclining in the studio as we mm -hmm. speak. Hi, Steve Arino. Hello, boys. Hey, buddy. <laughs> and his, now, who's the other guy? I've Jersey seen, Jerry. I've seen him at your house, Rudy. Yeah, Jersey Jerry. Oh, it's Jersey that's Jerry. That's Cobra. That's, that's yeah, a Jersey. Cobra's husband. That is Jersey <laughs> Jerry. Oh, I didn't even realize that's who it was. Hey, Jersey Jerry. How well, you oh, he's doing? in here, too. He's oh. sitting down. Are you enjoying yourself, Jersey Jerry? <laughs> Good. Everything's good. Oh, oy vey, I didn't notice the Cobra's husband. <laughs> Pandemonium okay. in the studio. Because of your entourage, Marsky. <laughs> Rudy, what is your lead story tonight? Well, listen, you guys, we've been talking about <laughs> Buzz. Oh, at this. Just happened. Dennis Murphy participated in an illegal event. The truth behind the running of the Bulls. After we come back. That is seriously some of the no, worst, maybe, no, worst no. delivery you, I've ever maybe heard. Maybe not no. after we come back. Did, maybe we do it right now, huh? Did you write that out for him verbatim, Rob? Is that you, what it says? Yeah, I think so. All right, now that you've had a chance to read it, why don't you try it again and maybe emphasize the words that are supposed to be emphasized? And in your own style. Rudy, it doesn't have to be verbatim. Okay, in your own right. style. Not in buzzes? Okay. Rudy, what is your lead story tonight? Okay. How about this? <laughs> Dennis Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> what was that? Okay, here we go. Yeah, did you pass along? Dennis Murphy participated in an illegal event. The truth behind the running of the Bulls. 
I haven't heard I haven't heard copy read like okay. that since we uh, since we had the uh, the late Big John Stud read a yes. commercial. That's yes. very nice. Okay. Hold on a second. Hello, yeah. hello there, Don and Mike show. You guys get caller one hundred. Hey, it's you, my oh. friend. Who? who? Oh, uh, That's Dennis talking to the Bulls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Beaches. Damn nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> The other is that... You can't say that on the air, Mr. Green. Well, I'm not on the air. Um, I was amused Beeb. to read that Ross... David, Bar just let me just go in the shit. We are on the air. Thank you, Peter. No bra can hold them. <laughs> Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. Thanks, Jude Walker. Don and Mike right here from WJFK. In Washington, D.C., you're hearing us on Westwood One in Honolulu, Hawaii, on the mighty KISA, Sioux City, Iowa, FM 99, KKMA, and in Lafayette, Louisiana, KVOL, FM 105.9 and AM, one three three zero. Yeah. Roger, Niner, mm -hmm. over. That's right. Buzz Burbank is not here. As you've heard, he's in the hospital. We wish him well. Speedy recovery, Buzz. Filling in today, one day only, and probably, seriously, the closest thing we're going to get to a real journalist. That is correct. <laughs> filling in with the news. As terrifying as that is to say, that is the truth. Rudy Martsky, right here. Now, tomorrow, when it's time for news and comment, the very annoying, but annoying, Lewis the Intern... <laughs> Oh, my God. I will not be enjoying... I, as much as uh, I love hearing Rudy read the news, I will not be enjoying tomorrow as much as today. Then on Wednesday, Ella, queen of the Las Vegas-style shows, Ella will be coming in to do the news totally nude. That's the one we're all looking forward to. And then Thursday's a big surprise. I can't, I can't tell you about that yet. Now here is uh, Rudy... Oh, boy. You know, this whole show is just is gone, and we haven't talked about anything that I want to talk about today. No, it's been pandemonium, and I will tell you, Rudy, you look adorable with those half glasses stuck to your forehead like that. Well, I'm still reading large copy. All right. You know what? I'm going to bag all the stuff I want to talk about until tomorrow. Let's just focus all of our attention right now on Rupert Marsky. Rupert, what is your next story? How about this? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> okay. CNN founder Ted Turner ah, ah, says that the forced retraction. Ah, 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 Rudy. Yeah. Ah, ah. See, we ah. do. That's our Ted Turner impression right now. You ever now. talked to Ted Turner? We think that's a pretty right on impression. Ah, I just, just ah, talked to him ah, two weeks ago in Atlanta. Ah, see, there ah, you go. And then they, see, that, there's where Rudy can drop a name. Mm -hmm. you, you talk to him personally. Huh? Ah, Hanoi Jane's breasts are ah, hard as rocks. Ah, 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 ah his implants. Ah, he didn't say ah, that to me. He didn't say that to ah, me. But ah, I was in his ah, office. Where do you get, the, where do you get the, <laughs> these implants? Of, Hanoi? Mm -hmm. Where do you get these implants on the Ho Chi Minh Trail? <laughs> Andy and Mayberry. 705. Ah, 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 Jane. <laughs> Beginning to realize why yeah. Buzz is in the hospital, aren't yeah. you, Rudy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good thing I'm only doing one day, you know, <laughs> that uh, I might be in there with him. But ah, 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 okay. Ah, ah, Ted Turner says ah, ah. the forced retraction of a CNN newsstand time story was like a death in the family. What story is that, Rudy? Well, it's coming up. I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, okay. okay. What was the story they retracted? So one where they, they had the, uh, they said that the U.S. We know, troops we know. We're just quizzing you. Threw nerve gas right on the defectors, okay? It's coming up right here. Ted said it has been the most quite horrible a nerve gas. nightmare <laughs> that I've lived through. The breakup of two marriages, uh, the death uh, of my father. Uh, uh. This ranks as possibly the greatest catastrophe of my life. The story accused the U.S. military of using nerve gas on defectors during the Vietnam War. An apologetic Turner said, quote, If I thought it would do any good, if anybody has a whip, I'll just take my shirt off and beat myself till I'm bloody on the back. I'd love to see that. Put that on the superstation. Yeah. But on the, on the bright side, the legendary Burt Reynolds has just finished Hard Time. Hard what time. Like, I, what okay. have you sagged into another story now? No, it's, it's still his first movie of a three-picture deal with Turner. 
Look for it soon at five minutes past the hour. Yeah. That's what was written here by Rob. Okay? Some bad copy. Are you in the stage now where you're giving some thought to maybe combing your hair straight back? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is like Buzz Burbank Bizarro World. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll have to go to the small type, so I have to put the glasses back on. Okay. Are right, you doing yeah. a super job, yeah. Rudy? You're listening okay. to the news on the Don and Mike show with legendary broadcaster Rudy Marsky. <laughs> Isn't it time for a break? Here? <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, you got no, plenty no, of okay. time now. Plenty Here we go. Time. Here we go. No, no. How about this? How about this? <laughs> Le Lethal Weapon 4, what you guys were talking about earlier, blasting the top box office spot. I'm getting, I'm, All right, I'm, here's ro I'm rolling now, I'm rolling. Quiz for okay. you. Yeah. Name the stars of Lethal Weapon 4. Uh, did, did you write the names down how for about him? Mel Gibson. Hold the, on. You got, one. You, that one. you got one. Correct. The black guy. What's his name? <laughs> okay. <Huh? laughs> right. What's his name? Danny what's Glover. Hey! That's it. Hey! That's two it. for two. All okay. right. The woman. Huh? Who's the woman? Who's, uh, who's the know. woman, Rudy? You don't know. No, wait. I, I, I saw the... I, I don't know. First name starts with R. R yeah, Ren... Yeah. Rene. Rene Russo. Rene Russo. That's it, yes. Very good. Good okay. job, Brody. You now, got okay. them all. No, no, First two one. more to go, Mike. Are oh, you going to give him the whole cast? Who's all the right. little guy who goes, no, 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 no? Okay, okay, okay. No, I, I don't know. The guy. I, usually, I usually do that. Joe. Oh, Joe uh, Pisco. No. 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 Joe no. Pisco? Joe Pesci. Joe Pisco. Joe Pesci. What, was him? Pesci. what movie finally. was Joe Pisco in? <laughs> and finally, who's the young comedian <laughs> who they brought along now? Very funny guy. Toss my salad. Very funny. Cutting he, edge. He was on uh, Leno the other night. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably so. Who is he? Rock. Somebody rock. Yeah. All right. That's good. Chris Rock. I will give Chris that Rock. to you. Chris Rock. Okay. I mean, we'll give that to Pretty you. good. That's Chris Rock. Very, very good. good. Mm -hmm. It's watching that. And, well, he's having dinner at the Palm Lake. Okay. <laughs> you, were, you were watching the Tonight Show and eating yeah. dinner? At the oh. Palm. At, at the, the Palm. palm. You know what's great, Rudy, is yeah. when you do the news, yeah. your friends, Jersey, Jerry, and Steve, they're both giving subtle hand gestures <laughs> while you're doing the news. Yeah, right. Well, I need help. I need help. Is okay. that the cheer that they're yeah. giving? Yes. That's the okay. What does this cheer mean, You guys Rudy? want to... You guys, oh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet you do, Rudy. I bet you do. Hey, listen, I have a good sex life. I just, but I keep mouse in the house too. That is the yeah. scariest mm -hmm. thing I think yeah. I've ever heard mm -hmm. you say. Yeah. How okay. many times? <laughs> Here goes how many that. times during an average week do you think you masturbate, Rudy? None. <laughs> oh come on. None. I don't need to. You don't do that anymore. Come on, all guys oh. need to. Well, occasionally. I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, okay. Once every month or two. I mean, oh. come on. So, have you already in the month of July? No. Oh, this is Jesus. Worse. This is oh, a Jesus. nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Jesus. Right oh, God, that's okay. scary. That's like thinking about my mom and yeah. dad doing it. <laughs> so you, you, the last time you masturbated was in the month of June? No. <laughs> no, I thought you I said, said it was just a month. Of, I don't remember. I don't remember. When was it? May? May Day? No. I don't. May Day? Was it a specific was it, day? Was it during no. the month of May? No, I don't. Don, I don't. I don't remember. Don't was, be uptight about it. I think it, it was Rudy. sometime in '98. I think it was <laughs> sometime okay. in '98. Yeah. I'm gonna puke. Yeah. <laughs> ask him about his anniversary. <laughs> what about his anniversary? Am I supposed to ask him about his no, anniversary? We just had that. We just had that uh, a week ago. You and Mouse, how many years? Uh, Thirty-two. Thirty-two years. Yeah, how about that? Huh? Very nice. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a secret for it either. Mr. Buckants mm. is indicating that yeah. perhaps there was a little uh, gymnastic activity. Oh, is that what you're saying? Yeah. You did it? Well, I yeah, that's one of the special days for us. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It's a special day, Mouse. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a special. It's our anniversary. Hey, Mouse, it's our anniversary. You know what that means? Second time this year. <laughs> yeah. All right. How about this? Yeah. Is that okay. Do you say, how about this, before you start? <laughs> when he stands in front of her naked. Yeah. How about yeah. this? Hey, Mouse, how about this? How about this? <laughs> no, no. I had to do that to draw attention to, to, this, to this thing. No, no. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Let's get back to Rene Russo. The cop comedy sequel, Lethal Weapon 4, has blasted its way to the top of the box office this weekend. The movie starring Mel Gibson and Daniel Glover, I cheated, I read this, earned about 30. Oh, you had the names written down. Oh, you had the names written down. But I've seen, the and I've seen enough of these lethal weapons. I've, I've seen this stuff. I know these guys. What's the last movie you saw in a theater? How there. about this? This will surprise you. How about you. this? What was it? Surprise you. Last night. What'd you go see? 
What, what's <laughs> about Mary? What something remember. about Mary. That's it. Something about Mary. You almost didn't remember. Yeah, it was a sneak preview. And a great, one of the greatest films I've seen in, a, in the last year. Very funny? Yes, so funny that the audience wouldn't even leave during the closing credits. Never seen that happen. Really? Yeah, because he had some special outtakes. Who was the young... Very raunchy. Ladies and gentlemen, he has worked a movie review mm -hmm. into his news character. Very nice, Rudy. Very good, Rudy. Here's another quiz for you. Who's the young hot actress who's the star of that movie? You know what? I, he didn't stay for It was friends. told to me. If you named off the name, I, I, I'd know. Cameron it. Diaz. That's it. She was yeah. great. She She's was pretty great. hot. Easy on the great. eye, too, mm -hmm. huh, Rudy? Oh, yeah. There was a couple of scenes about her there. <laughs> you know. does, but, she, does she get topless in the movie at all? Uh, one time. Oh, really? Can mm -hmm. you see anything? Well, I guess you could, if you're peeking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the but scenes. But that's not it. That is not what's... It, the, the movie is so raunchy, the audience was actually rolling in the aisles. This is when he was literally rolling in the aisles, loud guffaws all the I way. I saw a trailer for that movie, and I actually laughed out loud at the trailer. It does look like it's going to be pretty funny. And the trailer didn't have the best scenes, obviously. What does a guffaw sound like? Ha! Ha! <laughs> we'll, we'll save that one and play yeah. that a million yeah. times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, back, back to your story. Okay, $34.4 million grossed this last weekend. Best opening yet for any Lethal Weapon series. Despite bad reviews, Armageddon was second. Oh, oh, Armageddon. <laughs> oh, oh, Armageddon. Armageddon. I'm sorry. Armageddon. Armageddon, <laughs> Armageddon was second. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steve Armageddon. Has been Folks, he is not. Yeah. Armageddon. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. he is not yeah. faking this. Yeah. No. no Armageddon. Try to hold on a second. With me before you. Armageddon. <laughs> Earned just over twenty-three million dollars. Armageddon. Armageddon. The asteroid thriller oh, starring oh, Bruce Willis. Let's expect that to top the $100 million mark tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's a good movie, Armageddon. Armageddon. Hey, look it. And here are the estimated grosses for the top movies this weekend, okay? Compiled by Exhibitor Relations. <laughs> this is all the crap that Buzz never reads. I know it is. Maybe we should let skip it. Well, you know, if you hadn't read it, we wouldn't have gotten Armageddon. Yeah. yeah. Armageddon was only yeah, number two. Of course, you knew Three was. was Small Soldiers, 14.5 million. <laughs> Four is Dr. Doodoo. Armageddon. Dr. Doodoo. It's not Dr. Yeah. Doodoo. No, it's Doodoo -doo Little. Doolittle, okay. Yeah, Dr. Doodle. <laughs> yeah, done, okay. Man. Dr. Doodle. Five, Mullen. Is that how you what, pronounce it? What is the number five movie? Mullen or Mullen? I don't even know. Mullen. Yes, Mullen. 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 Six was Madeline. That's what Rudy used to do when he was in the Coast Guard yeah. on the weekends. They'd, they'd go out Mullen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was number seven, Rudy? The Truman Show. I got that one right. Okay, number okay. eight. The That's X, true man. X-Files. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Number nine. Tied for number eight is out of sight. And number ten, six days, seven nights. Very good. That's it. Very good. Any break coming up then? Yes, right okay. now, Rudy, okay. as a matter of fact. <laughs> and uh, I always like asking Buzz, what's the next story? So, Rudy, what is your next this? story? Okay, Something how about, about this? Bob Crane had a special birthday. We'll get to that right after this. Oh, thank you. Very professional, Rudy. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. Good afternoon. I'm Pamela Graham reporting for News Channel 7 and WPEK. A prison inmate who escaped from Spartanburg's north side... No, they didn't. You just brought a bucket of chicken to church. If God didn't want us to eat in church, he would have made gluttony a sin. They have more than enough hair down there. Right. Don and Mike. Oh, yeah. How about you, Rudy? I got my share. <laughs> hey, did you hear, Rudy, about um, this lady, Susan, that called our show last week? No, I did not. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a set up here. Did you hear about the guy in Minneapolis that had a contest to find the woman that was going to marry him? No, I did not. Okay, it was a big news story. It's a big news story. Steve, was, you uh, hear about that? Jersey Jerry, you hear about that? <laughs> right, Rudy. Everybody in the room's heard about it except you. He was interviewed on uh, every major network, Rudy, and he found his wife, uh, you know, just a total stranger, married her on the spot. So uh, a woman called our show last week, and she said, I would like to have you guys, meaning me and Mike, find her a husband. She will marry him, sight unseen, ten days from today. Her name is Susan, and I was just checking the faxes. We have gotten faxes from Spokane, Washington, Gainesville, Florida, Tampa Bay, Florida, mm -hmm. Portland, 
uh, a whole bunch from Baltimore and D.C. Guys who have faxed in their resumes, pictures, and information about themselves. We met this lady a little earlier in the show. She's A-OK. -okay. She really looks like Roz from Frasier. That's really the celebrity she most resembles. Except she has red hair and freckles. <laughs> That's right. But face-wise, she's a dead ringer. She otherwise, got a, she's, a, you know, she's got red hair and freckles. She's got otherwise... a, a much better body than Roz on Frasier has also. Yeah, yeah very oh. voluptuous. And we learned earlier today that she used to, in a previous life, be an exotic dancer. So, fellas, oh. if you would be interested in marrying a total stranger mm -hmm. on our show in the next 10 days, fax your information. And we're accepting faxes only right. at 1-800-636-636. 6410. And I forgot to mention that she also had the element of danger with that tiny little black widow tattoo on her foot. Mm -hmm. And the other one up, <laughs> up there by the bat cave. Yeah, the butterfly. Yes, the butterfly. So the elusive like butterfly. Down by the foot, you know, the evil part, and then uh, the butterfly right next pretty to Pretty butterfly. It. Pretty, pretty butterfly. Spread your wings and fly, pretty butterfly. Fly, baby. So if you would like to marry Susan, mm -hmm. and this is not a gag, right. she's really going to do it 100% serious. Facts in your resumes and we will start talking to the guys on tomorrow's show. It is not Susan Johnson. No, no, it's not. Mm -mm. Do you know who Susan Johnson is, Rudy? That was Frank Gifford's. Hey, uh, there you go. Way to go, Rudy yes. Marsky. Yes. Hey, you know what? When we were on vacation, I read in your column. There you go. Jer Jersey Jerry giving you some applause. Yes. <laughs> Hey, and Rudy, it's not too annoying when you come down to do the show that you just bring your friends down. They have like a, a barbecue in our studio. Um, I read in your column about Monday Night Football. Yes. That GIF might have to do his show, the pregame show, from that ESPN zone up in Baltimore, the Hard Rock Cafe place they've got up there. A live remote every week from Baltimore? Every week. The luckiest man in America. The GIF and... Chris Berman. Now, I, I think that's going to be a little bit too small for those two guys. The, the setting there, and when they com complete other ESPN zones and towns like Chicago, it's going to complete it next year, and New York and some other cities, they'll switch them over to that site. So but it's going to start out in Baltimore. Are they going to do every pregame there? Isn't that cheesy though to do yes, Monday night football pregame from a restaurant? I would think so. Yeah. Well, this is your your ABC. Synergy with ESPN now when they you you know what it's going to look like they'll be at halftime and actually the pregame there'll be a big ESPN logo sitting there during Monday Night Football uh, studio I I just think it's crass it's nice that Jersey Jerry's phone went off during the middle of the broadcast yeah. though That's he just went outside to answer it because he cares about us <laughs> Rudy what's your next story well, how about this. Much of America will be taking a moment to reflect today. Taking a moment. Taking a day moment. Which, a moment. Which, today, which marks the late Bob Crane's 70th birthday. Bob, Bob liked to film sex acts. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's right. He well, enjoyed them, Rudy. I would qualify for this show. <laughs> yes. Okay. The Hogan yeah. Heroes. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I knew that. I, I don't mean the Hogan it. Heroes. It's one of the few the shows Hogan's I used to watch. The Hogan's Heroes. It's catching. Mm -hmm. Hogan's Heroes. It's a story about a guy who was on Hogan's Heroes who were playing Hogan's Heroes music. Okay. Bob Crane, an ex-DJ and actor, is finally remembered for his role as Colonel Robert Hogan on Hogan's Heroes. Mm -hmm. In 1978, Crane was found dead, murdered in a Scottsdale, Arizona hotel room. He was beaten to death and an electrical cord was found around his neck. He will be missed. How did this get in here? I don't even know. <laughs> Read with a great deal of sincerity, though. Way to go, Walter Rob, Cronkite. Rob is sick. Okay. Yeah, right, Rob yeah. is sick. Yeah. Here's another one. Uh, Jersey Jerry, who was on the phone? Oh, I can't tell. Was it the Cobra? It's the big one. The was, big it, one. was it the Cobra? It was Mouse checking up on Rudy. It was Mouse checking up on Rudy. Oh, my God. Okay. Come on. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Here's a Paris State line. Hundreds of thousands are jamming the Champs Elysees in Paris as France continues to celebrate a stunning World Cup victory. Hey, way to go with Champs Elysees. You got that one right, Rudy. Yes. That's French music. Rudy, Rudy. don't stop really? to react okay. to the music. Just I've got barrel on. I'm kind of nodding along here. <laughs> An open top bus carrying the French team has been inching its way up the boulevard as adoring fans reach out to their heroes. The Paris subways have been filled with cheering, chanting people, young and old, many with their faces painted the red, white, and blue of the French flag. France's stunning 3 to nothing victory over Brazil yesterday sent the country in a patriotic celebration. They steal that red, white, and blue from us? You bet, Mike. As long as I've been living, the French have been f***ing us. <laughs>
I hate France, Rudy. I do too. I hate Don, soccer. Don, I've been hearing that from you uh, today as we were driving over here. Uh, uh, I don't disagree with you, although I've never been to France. And I was told by several ABC and ESPN people who was there, who were there this year yeah. for the World Cup, that the French people were very cordial to the Americans. Ah, oh, BS. Uh, they are very cordial to you, to your face. That behind <laughs> your back, we tell you that you stay. You know who they were cordial to? Do you remember a chap named Adolf Hitler? Yeah. Adolf Hitler came into their country. You know what they said? Here's the walk. Here is the welcome, Matt. Here you Please go. take our country now. Enjoy. Take England while you're at it. Then go across the sea and take America. Welcome, Adolf Hitler. We do not care. We are French. Do you remember when we wanted to fly over their airspace to yes. go bomb some bad yes. guy? You know what they said? Oh, no, no, no. No, no. We will eat our brie cheese and we will not let you fly over our country because we are the French. Oh, I hate they won the World Cup. It doesn't matter because soccer sucks. Hey, listen. I'm talking to somebody else. This is Ladies some, and gentlemen. This is something. You, this other guy, Rudy Marsky, would tell you this. Something you didn't know that I know. Were you just talking okay. about yourself in third person? Well, I'm, I'm supposed to be Buzz right now. Yeah, Rudy doesn't okay. play that game. Okay. Rudy Marsky doesn't yeah. play that game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about this? What? Yeah, you say nobody cared about the World Cup? Right. Did a seven overnight rating in this country double what you might have expected? Well, How, How many of that, that was foreigners? Hmm? How many Americans watched that? No, they were watching that? Univision. The foreigners were watching Univision, weren't they? At least the Spanish-speaking people were. Hey, it did higher than... Hey, listen to that, Kentucky Rudy. Derby. Everybody's listening. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll go on to something else here. <laughs> okay. Don, I, I agree with you. Blowing these guys off. They were speaking to some forked tongues calling you earlier. Trying to promote the World Cup. Some guy from Iran was trying to say they beat us in soccer. So what? All right, stop sucking okay. up and read the next story. Okay. Here, good news for those who enjoy both football and great music. <laughs> Don Geronimo enjoys football. Okay, to celebrate a 25-year alliance between the NFL and United Way, 49ers receiver Jerry Rice and Bengals quarterback Jeff Blake have recorded a song entitled, We're All in This Together. Also, Is this a real story or a joke story? Well, it's written by Rob. What do you think? Is this real or... It's real. It's, this is real. Okay. All right, what is it? Start well, again. Also on... Start again? We'll just kind of okay. capsulize it. What? Well, watch. Jerry Rice and Jeff Blake have recorded a song entitled We're All in This Together. For about what? Also on it. I think it's all about everybody's in the NFL together. Also on a song. No, I music. don't think that's what it's about. United Way. It has to do with Oh, it's United for the United Way. Way. Okay. Yeah. Okay, see, we're NFL all in this together. NFL and United Way. 25 years. <laughs> okay, great. Okay? Great. Also on a song, our musical all star. Even like, your friends are starting to get tired now. <laughs> And they've been with you all of... day. <laughs> they've been out playing golf and drinking beer with you all day long. You know what? I'm in. Rob, this is a bad one to put in there. That's the end of that one. Okay? Oh, look at that. Hey, editor-in-chief, huh? Rudy oh. Marsky. Oh, well, you can do that if you're the your newsreader. Good job, Rudy. Good Very job. Good, yeah. Rudy. Hey, Kerry Collins and Danny Canell are on there, too. Huh? They're going to be on there. No, they're not. Huh? What? They're on the other CD, Rudy. Yeah, that's right. No, okay. A CD, an NFL United Way CD. On, so Rudy, what? Buzz, okay. please get yeah. well soon, man. <laughs> yeah. If you're okay. listening right now, please heal, Buzz, heal. Wait a second. Here's one. So what? <laughs> Dennis Hopper and libel damages, okay? Yeah. <laughs> You get almost as good as Lewis right now. Price tag for Dennis Hopper's talk show tale about fellow actor Rip Torn is four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and rising. The California Supreme Court has unanimously denied review of Unanimously. Hopper's yeah, unanimously. A d denied review of Hopper's appeal of a defamation... Defamation. Defamation, <laughs> <laughs> defamation verdict Our for Megan saving Don. Torn. This is the Don and Mike Show. The Don and Mike Show on 98.1 The Peak. Uh, so I was watching... Sonny Bono's widow is fed up with Cher. Oh. And I watched this story, and... Everything that I said whenever Sonny Bono died six months ago, right? Mary Bono, his widow, is now saying. Bravo. Oh, listen to this. She says she's sick of seeing the Sonny and Cher reruns on TV. Mm -hmm. She says Cher treated Sonny like crap right. for the last 20 years, yep. never had a good word to say about him, and Cher is now rewriting history yep. in an effort to save her career. I'm watching this on so the she, TV. That, that's from her lips that's yes, coming? Yes, yes, from good. Mary Bone. Well, now it was good. through a reporter. Okay. She talked to a reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times, and All the right. reporter was the one that was being interviewed. But I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, vindication, baby. Sure, absolutely. You called you call that the, the day after uh, you know they made the announcement that she she was delivering the eulogy. And I still remember that call. 
that we got where a lady called me a soulless monster for saying that about Cher, that she truly was in love with him. You know, they totally disregarding the facts of the matter that they had a very ugly, messy divorce. Right. You know, I, th I thought it was kooky back then that he would die and that Cher would give the eulogy in, in the first place. So if anybody out there has that tape, we'd appreciate it. And I know that people tape the stuff all the time on TV. Do you know that we today, in today's mail... We got six copies of Mike Ditka singing the national anthem. <laughs> right? There was one guy that said he was going to send it to us right. and ended up with six guys sending them. So if you got that, send it in and thank you. Good. Now, about... Oh, I haven't even talked about that. How did you know that? Well, you, you mentioned it yesterday, and then I, I thought I might have missed it, but maybe no. you just never got to it. Yeah, I, I didn't. I'll talk about it. I, I'm pissed at Ken. I'm pissed at this whole place. But okay. I'll, talk to you, but I'll tell, tell you about it. Thank you for asking Thanks, me. Thanks, Gad. All right. Bye-bye, my friend. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a whole downer for me. I'm going to wait. I'm on a, a good roll right now. I'll wait till something bad happens during the show, and then I'll launch into that. That is a drag. That is a super drag. Well, all right, I'll do it now. <laughs> I just get it out of the way. And I listen. I only bring this up because this show is the only place that I can get my point of view across on. Sometimes it's good to have this show, Don. Sometimes it's good to have this show to uh, to vent. Oh. Yeah, why don't you... You know what, Mike? While I vent, get, I've got a tiny I, little vent. While I get my materials ready for my vent... Yeah, let me say hi to my friend Jim at Robinson Paving, who who just... Who is having a wonderful, wonderful business uh, career because he is too busy to call me back. That's what he said. Too busy. And I, and I called him, and he said, Hey, I was too busy to call you. And I said, Too busy? He said, Yeah, just too busy to call you. I said, Well, I mean, I, I, two minutes... Too busy. So I just want to say congratulations, Jim. Congratulations to you, Jim, at Robinson Paving for being too busy to call me. So long. Hasta la vista. We will see you later. I'm so happy for... You know, I didn't want to say anything detailed. I simply wanted to yell. Would you allow me to do that? I don't do... Have you already you started yelling? I just, just once, can I just say... Are I just want sure? to say... Let it out. Congratulations to you because you are too busy. Jim at Robinson Paving. Welcome to, to Vendetta Tuesday. Back. So long. And then I was kind of like, yeah, well, if you really feel it, he says to me, if you really feel that way, we should go our separate ways. Yeah, well, I'm happy. I'm real happy for you. I'm really happy that you, everything's so good that it's just, hey, to heck with me. Weren't too busy when you were doing work for me before, but you're too busy now. Okay, so long. So long, Jim. Hope you have a nice life. Take care. It's been a real hoot. It's been a real hoot, Nanny, and a real pleasure. <sighs> there. I, I feel so much better. Thank you, Rob. Do you Thank ever you. think... That was, a yes. that was very nice, Mike. Thank you. Do you ever think it might be you, though? <laughs> that it might be me? Yeah. About, about what? Did you love talking to guys, like, that work on your house and stuff? Yes, yes. I couldn't, I couldn't picture getting mad at one of those guys. Because mm -hmm. when they're doing stuff in my house, I'm always hiding inside so they won't. <laughs> <laughs> won't talk to me. You know, I think you're absolutely right. I think I get too hands-on, Don. I get too involved. And I tell you, after this morning, after my morning this morning, it's probably just as well that I don't have anything to do. You know, really, I wish I was more of a hands-off guy and I didn't have all this personal contact. Because if I had less of this personal contact, I wouldn't have the aggravation that I had today, the aggravation making me feel about that big, which is how I felt today. And then, you know, and then you just, uh, you, you just get off, you're all stressed out, and, uh, and you gotta come in here and you got to say hi to a friend which is exactly what i did <laughs> hi jim <laughs> love you there okay yeah, you know, you're having a good speech right. you're right you know i should be less involved i should say to hell with it i should let you know really how do i do that though how could i change i don't ever talk to any of those guys man you know why i don't talk to those guys because they're small potatoes no not because they're small potatoes no that's michael mara saying that yeah i'm just talking about i'm not talking to you don and i'm not talking to all those <laughs> talking other guys to somebody I'm else talking to somebody else and he knows who he is because i don't know jack about my house you know i had a i had guys out repaving my driveway right a couple of days ago and they came by today to put the sealer on gee that's the exact same thing I was talking about, too. That's exactly the, the thing. That, it was weird when you told me that in the office. I had these guys come out, and I finally went outside and talked to them mm -hmm. because what I noticed was 
that there was two guys. There was one at the top of the driveway, one at the bottom. They're sealing, right? They're putting right. the... Uh, okay. They put this uh, stuff that looks like Hershey syrup, a big glop of it, a, a big blech in the middle. And then they have these big, they look like rakes. Do they also do paving, regular paving? Oh, I, don't, I didn't ask because, them. I don't hey, know. I'm sure in the market for that right now. <laughs> I need somebody. But they had two guys, the guys at the top of the drive, the guy at the top of the driveway, mm -hmm. he was like the Michelangelo right. of, of sealing. Mm -hmm. He was up there going back and forth, left and right, making sure that it all lined up straight. Very long, smooth stroke. Meanwhile, the guy down on the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, quirky, <laughs> <laughs> his were going all kinds of different which ways. So I actually sat upstairs looking through the window, right. peeking through the window so they wouldn't see me <laughs> until I finally saw, listen, the guy on the top's doing a good job and the guy at right. the bottom's not doing such a good job. Mm -hmm. thought my wife is not here. I can't send her outside to tell them to do it better. Tell them I want it done better. <laughs> so... I went outside and hung around for a while and then sheepishly said to the guy, hey, you're a lot better than that guy down there. He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I said, he said, I take it serious. <laughs> then did you run back into the house after that? <laughs> I said, would you please go fix his work? Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Run upstairs and then peer through the blinds just a little bit. <laughs> and then I brought them lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you came out, came out wearing your real short shorts, right? right. <laughs> Just like Mrs. Cleaver. <laughs> Lemonade. And I wish I was you. I wish I cool, could do that. refreshing drink. Because I, I would have a lot less aggravation if I had less contact with, uh, with a lot of people. Yeah. I really would. I'd feel a lot better. But you know something? I feel so much better right now. Because I sure. don't... You know, really, seriously, I think I've done it twice in the whole process that I had of, of having my house built. I think uh -huh. I, I've done it to you personally like a million times. I've always got a story <laughs> for you. But that's the first time that I felt so strongly that I just wanted to say hi to a friend. Don't you remember when you were getting your house built? Yes. <laughs> when we'd talk about you going out and supervising everything the guys were doing. Yeah, and that, you know, meanwhile, they're spitting in things, and you know, they're, they're making sure something's done wrong. You see this part? You see this part of the house? When he steps here, he'll go right through the floor. We reinforce this wall with balsa wood. <laughs> all, all that has to happen wow. is somebody leaning up against it. I'm sure now you'll get somebody. Oh, here's a guy calling right now. Okay. okay. There you go. Now that you're going to get every paving guy in the world calling you. Hello. Don Mike. Hey, my friend. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you? Hey, Hi there. Best wishes to Buzz. I hope a uh, speedy recovery for him. Yeah, amen to that. Yeah, here. Hey, here. Uh, as far as this paving's concerned, my friends, uh, if you just had your driveway paved, you should be waiting at least three to four months before you have somebody come out and seal that. All they did is just basically destroyed it. What? He, what he's are you talk talking about? He's not talking, talking to me, about, Don. He's talking, talking to somebody else. Okay, and then come no, in no, no, no. My driveway... Oh, uh, please stop. My driveway has already <laughs> been paved, okay? You know, I already see on your face that this is why you don't like to deal Wait, with this. Listen. Because you, you, you just... You, you don't want to have... only had it sealed. You're supposed to have it sealed every two years. So the guys just came out and they did that. My driveway oh. had a layer put <laughs> down and then another layer was supposed to be put on it. Okay. And that's when I, I dealt with my friend today, talking to him today. Okay, I hope you So I'm not I'm not having any uh, I'm not having anything a, sealed except the tapes of this show. I hope he's a better friend to you than uh, Mike's friend uh, was to him. Okay. He's a great friend. Who? Oh, okay. Great. Great I 70s. Didn't, I didn't understand. I hope he's a better friend to you than Mike's friend was. Who was he talking to when he said that? I was His just buddy at Robinson Taven. I was just, you know, politely trying to move it oh. along. Okay. All right. Oh. Thank you. All right. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye. Hey, are you? Uh, I wanted to ask him if he's an artist out there when he does that, like that one guy did today. Does he do the long, smooth? Yeah, strokes? back and forth, all the way up to the edge and everything, man. Mm -hmm. That guy's an artist. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. <laughs> yes, How's hello. it going, fellas? Hey, my friend. My 21st birthday today. 21. Yeah. 21. And? and uh, hey, Don. Yes. Can you grab the ice pick and uh, I don't want to uh, get it. I ain't no fag. No, listen, I don't want to get it in the ass, just uh, in the chest or no, something. No, no. No, I'm not going to do anything to you, sir. Oh, man. We never do it to guys. But I'm from Sacramento. Do it to yourself. I, I can do that. You know, there's a lady that's got a uh, guest house down in Albuquerque, I think. <laughs> that. Uh, no, I don't. No, no. Uh, no freaks with the uh, tattoos on the ankle. She sounds like a nice lady. Oh, though. she's not a freak. Come on, you. Uh, You're the freak. <laughs> Call it up to be spanked by a guy. You're the freak. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> you freaks that carry your luggage hey, uh, to the room. Happy birthday, my friend Eric. It's his. It's his okay, all Get right. out of here. Bye bye. What do you think? This is community bulletin board? Cut it out. And also, we got a lost dog in my neighborhood, Donna Mike. Hello. Hello. Hey, you're on the air, Don and Mike show. Oh, uh, I didn't expect to get through. I, I wanted to ask you guys a question about the the Dennis Murphy and the bee. 
Dennis Murphy. Oh, in the Sacramento Bee. Is yesterday? it clear? You, yeah. you mentioned it before. Is, I mean, it's obviously yeah. Dennis when you yeah, see you, it. You can't miss it. That was yesterday's paper. Front page of Monday. Monday's paper. Or that would Sunday? be yesterday. Was Monday. No, no. I mean, because they have a picture on Sunday's paper of the running of the Bulls. You know, many libraries keep uh, copies of the newspapers on microfilm. You know, maybe you're right. I don't know. We just received the facts yesterday. Well, what does it say? Did it say Monday or Sunday? I don't know. Well, look at it and read it. I don't have it in front of me right now. What do you care? Because I want to check out Dennis Murphy, man. Well, then go back and, uh, you know, check all the copies. It's on the front page, right? Then it's either Sunday or Monday. Hey, want to play the name game? <laughs> well, you know, this is almost like, a, is this Lewis's warm-up, man? <laughs> we'll kill you. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll entertain that, just because it'll be fun to squash you okay. like a bug. All right, I'll see who gets squashed. And that's sad. Now, see, I miss him again. I miss Buzz, because we... Yeah, we always look, look over, over there to get the word. Um, hey, Christine. Christine. What's he saying to his friends? Watch this. Uh-oh. Is that, I heard you. You said that, didn't you? Yeah, that is what I said. Yeah, watch this. Here comes this. Uh, Christine. Hi, uh, Christine. Give us a first name, please. A first name? Yeah, yeah. we're playing the name game. Any first name. Oh, um... Hey. Julie. That's who I am. Julie? Yep. Uh, Julie King, Larry King's ex-wife. Julie Christie. Uh, uh hello? Uh, yeah. A uh, genius. Yeah, well, hold on. Someone was just, uh... Julie Pope. Who's Julie Pope? You know that one chick that used to be on Happy Days? No, her, name's, her name was Erin Moriarty. Moronity. Oh, the other one, uh, Jody no. Friend. No, 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 no. No, you're wrong. Enough. Okay, oh. and here you go. Are you ready for this? Yeah. A downtown Julie Brown and the Julie Brown with big boobs. Uh, Julie Kavner. Okay, uh, your turn to catch up, sir, if Julie, you got one. You got me, man. I, yeah, of Julie course. Newmar. Oh, good one, Mike. Good one. Catwoman. Okay. Ju Julie, 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 do you love me? Julie Andrews. Uh, ooh, no, this is tough. Julie. Ju Julie. Man. Richard Giuliani. <laughs> <laughs> Julie. Um, if you got one, you can beat me. I don't know, man. I'm trying to. If I have one, I... I... What, are what are you doing? doing? What are you doing with the phone? Oh, man, I just got done with lunch. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, oh come, come on. on. Oh, come on. Jeez. <laughs> Forget about it. My concentration shot. Hello, Donna Mike Show. Hello? Hey, it's Kiki. Hey, Kiki. Hey, it's uh, the kick. You remember me. Who is this, please? Hi, sweetie. It's Kiki. Kiki. Hey. Oh, I remember you. Rob, is this the 50-plus-year-old? Yeah, with the 44 Ds. She yeah, came 44 in Ds. Oh, I'm down at the market oh. in. Hey, how did that go with the guy that, uh, you know, hurt his neck that sued you? Oh. Oh, that was another That lady. was another girl, Mike. The guy okay. I was going to give the Monica to? Hi. Hi, Kiki. Hi, sweetie. Hi. What do you want? Um. Why don't you turn your radio down just a little okay, bit, Kiki? All right, all right. You're getting a little distracted. I was you know? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I wanted to go into Las Vegas, but now I'm going to Cancun this weekend. Julia, that's the, uh, Julia, I'm going, Kiki, that's the wrong event. You're thinking I'm of the, the run with Vegas the cows. Weekend. Can I call you for Cancun this weekend? Yes, yes, call us whenever you like, Kiki. No, I'm calling you for, no, like your Las Vegas show. Can I come to it? Oh, of course, please come to the show. Well, where, when is it? Where is it? It's at the Bayou uh, in D.C. in Georgetown on Wednesday, July 29th. And how do I get in, like? And butt ahead of everybody, you know. Just so tell just them like, you're. Just so tell just them you're. Like push my, my chest in front of yes. everybody, and push then... that heaving mound of cheese <laughs> through the doors. <laughs> yes, Kiki, hold. <laughs> that hold, does it. Hold on, hold on, please. That's that's Kiki, everybody. Kiki D. Do you remember when she? Oh, you could be king of the Kikis, <laughs> Mike. King of the Kikis. Do you remember when she came down here with yeah. her heaving cheese laden bosom? You could really, you could hide much more than a can of cat food. You could hide a six pack under each breast. Hello, hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike. This Hi is there, Ed Sacramento. Hi, Ed. Hey, uh, I wanted to find out whatever happened with that freaky gal that uh, was writing Lewis. Did you ever call her? Oh, we're going to call her today when Lewis is in to do the news. Oh, you're going to call her today. As hey. we fight desperately to keep Lewis out of the studio before he's going to do the news. Oh man, someone's got to get him a volume. That would be nice. <laughs> hey, uh, another question. Yeah. You, you guys were talking about bug guys the other day. I heard you talk about the Oricon and the Terminex guy. Yeah. And I'm a bug guy, but I'm not no scabby old freaky oi. Do you wear, uh, you know, the uniforms that look like the uh, the Nazis? No, I, I actually do wear a, uh, a uh, uniform 
but I wear jeans. I don't wear them. Wouldn't it be great if the exterminator came to your house in one of those real things they show on the commercials, those robot, like, oh, yeah. robocop outfits? Hey, Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> I, do, I do have a belt. I bet, I, that, t- I bet I t- bug guys really get off on that commercial. I oh, bet sure. they watch that commercial and they go, look, honey. That's what I do for a living. Look at that. Ooh. I, I have a belt that has a, uh, a roach Bug gun. man. <laughs> what, Ed? What about your belt? I have a belt that has a roach gun on it. It has all these tools and stuff, so it kind of looks like... The guys always say I look like that guy off a mouse hunt when I come in the, to, to exterminate some roaches or something. A they belt say, oh. that has a roach gun. Cheech Marin used to wear one of those also. It <laughs> was a roach clip, Mike. Oh, of course. That's right. <laughs> and I, that's another thing that I bet that exterminators get off on is that movie Mouse Hunt. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, uh, anything to glorify the life of the exterminator. <laughs> they make they make us out to look like some kind of freak that's just you know crazy or something. Like yeah, go thing. figure. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a mask. You wear like a, one of those surgical masks when you're doing your work. No, we wear a full respirator. Oh, do you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We go all out. Not the guys that came to my house. Not these old codgers. <laughs> You're probably using uh, one of them uh, Brand X people, like uh, Terminator. No, or- no, I'm using Orkin. Oh, see, there you go, Brand X. Oh, guys are, those are, uh, they, oh, come on. There's incredible competition in the extermination business. Everybody's trying to get a leg up here. You know, the one time, do you remember when I had that uh, dead mouse in a place I was living at down mm-hmm. in, uh, in the Annapolis area? Wasn't it in your stove? It was in the stove, and I brought the guy out there, and as he's working, we had a great time, and, and I said, you know, once again, here I am, hands on. And I said, what is, I, I, anytime I talk to an exterminator, I forgot to ask that guy, <laughs> what is the grossest thing that's ever happened to you? And he told me about down in Florida, he went into the basement of a Chinese restaurant restaurant where they had a bug complaint yeah. and there was a tiny light bulb that was almost burned out. It was just this tiny little light bulb and it didn't illuminate the entire wall, but he could see just enough of the wall and the illusion that was created was that the entire wall was moving back and forth. And then when he turned his flashlight on, the solid wall was palmetto bugs, which is about, about the biggest cockroach you would ever see in your Cockroach. Life. Cocky roaches. Cockroach. <laughs> With Dan Aykroyd. Hello there, Don and Mike. Hello. Can I talk to Don Mike? Nope. Hey, Don and Mike show. Hello. Yeah, which, uh, which guy is Dennis in that picture? I don't even know. We had it in the studio yesterday. He's easy to pick out. I think it's in the... Towards the left hand, the upper left hand side, he's half cropped out. He has on a matador jacket and a white t shirt underneath it. Oh, I see a big fat guy with a white t shirt. Mm-hmm. Dennis Murphy. He would be wearing the, uh, and wouldn't it be something if he had run with the bulls wearing the matador jacket without any pants at all? This guy has two hands, though. Well, then it's not Dennis. Well, I'll try. Listen, I don't know. I'm sorry. We don't have the paper here. All right. But I know I I spotted it yesterday. Thank you. All right. All right. Goodbye. Listen, that's enough love for right now. (laughs) We're going to do a special toe tap and touchstone here to clear out the telephone lines. All right. Tomorrow morning, we have a special Elvis-like screening of the movie Lethal Weapon 4. Mm -hmm. And at least they didn't present this like Super Bowl uh, numerals like like Lethal Weapon. uh, What is it? Would it be IV? IV or is it... I, 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 I. It would be uh, IV. IV. Okay, well, they just gave it to number four. And I'm terrible at Roman numerals. I hope I've got that right. And we are doing the premiere tomorrow morning. Now, here's what we're doing. If you're a mom or a dad mm-hmm. and you have a bunch of kids that you would like to bring to see Lethal Weapon, right. that's who we're going to give the tickets to mm-hmm. right now. And we'll take the first five callers, starting with caller number 100 at 1-800-636-1067.